and let's look for the team live. Yeah. Let's say that there it is. Public and boom. Ta da! It should be over on the second channel, I hope. We'll find out. Everything looks fine in OBS. All good. La la la. Ah, there come people. Hello, hello, everyone. Hi, hi. How are we doing today? Hello, hi. I think, can you all, yeah, you can see the title. Watch it. Every time I stream, I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, hello, everyone. Hi, hi. I'll wait for people to roll in before I start talking. Should I turn this light off? Does that look better? That look better on the camera. I have to wait for the latency to be done. Yeah, that's a bit creepier, I guess. Sure, we'll leave it. Hi, everybody. So, do I say, first of all, how do I sound? Because that's always the issue with me. How do I sound? <laughs> I always have some technical issue that's going on in the midst of everything. A bit quiet. All right, I'm going to fix that. Uh, is this it? Yeah, hold on. I'm in OBS touching stuff. Hold on one moment. Uh, perfect team. Blah, blah, blah. This is audio input. All right, uh, close. That should let me go a bit louder, actually, because I want I want if I say something, I want it to be feared and known. All right, let's try. Okay, this is five. Cool. Okay, so now is that any better? Now, whenever I talk about things, is that a better level of audio? Does that work? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. And we'll figure out it's our little secret. All right. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Let's go. Awesome. I did something right without exploding. So what I want to do today is I'm in research uh, currently for... The next upcoming video um do i want to tell i guess i can tell you guys what the next video is going to be since you all are the special ones who's here for the stream uh here let me yeah sure we'll just do this so my next uh video topic is this fella haha <laughs> the one uh and no i don't use wikipedia as a source i use it as a jumping off point for sources so that's the next main video topic but in the meantime, there is a lot. I know a lot of y'all have been asking for that for a while now. Um, I've already got like a booklet of a few pages like uh, in, and I'm just, I'm literally on his early life before the actual Unabomber thing started. And there's a lot. It's going to, I think it'll be a cool video. It's very, I have found out things about him that I had never even heard of before, much less looked into. So I think it'll be an interesting video. But while I was researching that, I was like, man, there's a lot of ARGs, like internet horror stuff, I haven't looked at in a long time. Uh, j just because I've been doing video topics about other stuff, I've kind of not really thought about it since I did the last Mandela Catalog video. So I wanted to uh, watch some of them. I was sitting down about to watch some of them. And then I thought, you know what? I haven't done a stream over here on the second channel in like forever. Uh, and uh, I have the second channel I've got you all to watch it with, so why not watch them together? I haven't seen them, so we'll react at the same time. I have no idea if these are going to be any good. These are just the ones that I've heard, 
uh, that people like, and we're going to check it out. Uh, also, people are asking why our Super Chat's off. One of the reasons I do not stream that often is because I feel bad about taking your all's money. Um, because, like, I'll be completely honest with you guys. This is not applicable to every YouTuber. This is specifically just applicable to me. Uh, I make enough money off of YouTube. I really appreciate that you all want to support me, but I'm not in a financial situation where I would in any way feel comfortable asking people for money for nothing, for just, just so they can throw money at me. Um, if you really want to support me, then check out some of my sponsors because based on how sponsors perform, they want to re-up their offers with the channel. Um, and I am invest, another fun fact about future stuff. I am investing money right now into hopefully getting a website and some merch going because it's been forever since I've done that. Uh, so if you really want to support the channel, wait until I do that, uh, because then you can actually, you know, get something for what you pay for. Uh, but until then, I'm not going to just ask for your money for the sake of it. I, I can't sleep whenever I do that. And if I do this, if I don't take your money, then I'm willing to stream more. So it's a win-win. You don't pay money and it happens more often. So there you go. Um, so with that being said, I want to, like I said, watch some of this stuff with you all. And if I have any funny reactions, you can clip them and make whatever memes out of them you want to. So the three, which we can look at more. I have no idea if these are going to be any good. We could get like halfway through these and I'm like, this is lame. And we go to something else because I have no idea. I want to watch this. It's called The Kid in a Camera. I think it's just one seven minute short. People on Twitter were like, ah, oh, this thing's terrifying. Uh, Urban Spook, which I know nothing about. I've just heard good things from it. And uh, The Vita Carnus. So these are all pretty short compared to most of the like horror series I cover. So I figure let's go through them and watch them. Does that sound good to everyone? Is everyone hyped for that? All right, that's what I like to hear. Let's go. All right. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah, scary stuff. All right, all right, awesome. So, I want to say, let's start with, I guess, the kid in the camera because it's just seven minutes, right? And everyone said it was really good. So, it's just seven minutes. We'll go ahead and do that. It's a good kickoff. So, here we go. But as always, thank you for watching. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let me know if you guys can hear this okay. It's kind of quiet. I think it's supposed to be right now. But can can you at least hear the, the keys? I'll make sure we're all on the same page. Can you can you all hear the, the cute little la 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 la? It's good. All right, cool. Awesome. Making sure. Someone asked, is it recent? Uh, three months ago. Yeah, so pretty recent. All right, here we go. No idea what we're getting into, but we're getting into it together. Let's go. My, I'm very close to my screen, and it's very Once big, so if I'm scared, I'll get scared a lot. There lived a boy named Kalen. Wait, hold on. Does this have subtitles? I always turn on subtitles with these things. They're auto-generated, but sure, why not? Okay, anyway. Once upon a star. There lived a boy named Caleb. Bad he things will happen to Caleb, I'm sure. Of six years old, and on his birthday, he received a very special gift. His very own photo camera. Caleb loved the camera. So much that he took it out every day, snapping photos of anything he could. A picture here, a picture there. Until one day, a terrible accident happened. So. And the camera broke. Okay, so something I noticed, because I'm sure it's going to get bad. Something I noticed was this is all like, you know, like stop motion, sort of claymation, whatever. Uh, they're all f animated figures. But the pictures were of real things, right? So, like, I know I'm over, I know I'm literally overanalyzing it one minute in, but stay with me. Um, 
Some says the volume is very low. Let me crank the volume up a little bit and we'll see. Hold on, does. Happy little tot of six years old. More, and on his birthday, he received a very special gift. we're gonna get it whenever a scream happens. His very own photo there. camera. All right, the audio's up a bit. Kalen loved the camera. So. So much that he took it out every time. Okay, yeah, here where he takes the pictures, photos. like this is all animated, right? Anything he could. But then the image, the here. like that, that's like a real ball, it looks like. But, it's, but yeah, like that's just a picture of a dog. So even though it's animated, the photos are Until not. one day, so, a terrible I don't know if that'll mean happened. anything, but yeah, he broke the camera. And the camera broke. Kalen didn't sleep a wink. Haunted by thoughts of his once perfect camera. The static is loud, it's like my videos. That was when a sudden sound caught his attention. Is the knocking coming from the camera? And there stood on the other side of Kalen's bedroom window. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Oh my word. What on earth? I don't like that thing. Its eyes are so deep. Oh, ah. Ah, it's so big. It's the whole screen. Ah. <sighs> okay. All right. <clears throat> it has. <laughs> it has my attention. Creature. Hello there, young lad. Greeted the creature. Oh, its mouth. I'm the Kipsneed, your sleep fairy. Sleep fairy? The Kipsneed. That is correct, okay. replied the Kipsneed. My job is to make sure you get a good night's sleep, but it's come to my attention that you haven't been resting at all lately. I'd like to know the reason why. Kalen had never heard of a sleep fairy. You know, again, analyzing too soon into it, I'll quit as we get further into stream. I just haven't talked to you guys for a while so how's, how's it going how's everyone doing um one of the things i don't think it's talked about enough with not just like internet horror analog horror but with any horror that has like a subversive aspect of it is that most often what we see is a stand-in for what's really happening like for okay for example let me take a let me take an example we can all relate to uh scary kid okay so like this right i have no idea what this is from i literally googled scary kid drawing but if i can drag this over to this screen yeah okay so like things like this like scary kid drawings right we've all seen in movies where you know, the, the girl, the, the daughter will be drawing all these little things and then they'll come across this, right? Like the daughter will draw some scary figure. It's not that this actual drawing, like the red eyes and the, and like, you know, the black arms, it's not like that's scary. What's scary is that this is all we get of something much, much worse of like, th this is just the stand in for something that's about to happen. Because we see that, so the question is, what does the real thing look like? And I don't think I've ever accurately said this before. But, one of the reasons, every, th every time I talk about ARGs, it eventually comes back to Alex, uh, or Analog Core. But one of the reasons this scared me so bad... Because people, everyone was clown, like people, you know, clowning about like, oh, did the creepy face freak you out? No. What freaked me out is this entire thing is a kid's cartoon, right? 
about real life events, or at least, you know, Don't biblical events, right? So everything joy. we see right you here is establishing that this is a historic event, and we are watching a modern characterization of how that de event played out. And this is oh, all standard know. Bible, it's all straightforward. But when we get to this part, the scary thing isn't like, okay, it has the stretch face and the smile or whatever. The scary part is that this is the closest this kid's cartoon can illustrate what the real thing looks like. So therefore, what on earth does it look like? And that's why it, that's why it's like effective for. Because it's the same, it's the same energy, it's the same vibe, so to speak, as a creepy kid's drawing that's written on the fridge or whatever, right? That's why I thought the overthrow was so effective. So off of that. <laughs> what, what is this thing? <laughs> like what on God's earth is that? I don't like that at all. Because it, 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 we always talk about like, you know, you'll hear people say stuff with horror and they're like, it's the unseen that's scary. It's letting your imagination do it. And some people take that to the extreme and they're like, oh yeah, just hear something thumping down the hallway and that's it. That's all horror is. Like you hear a noise, you hear a monster implied and that's where horror comes from. You imagine everything. And I think that's pushing it a bit far. But something like this, <laughs> or overthrown, where you're shown like, oh, this is how a kid would draw it. It's like, okay, what does that mean? <laughs> what are we talking about here? And that's why I think it's effective. Um, anyway, a, a bunch of rambling again, two minutes in. But I'll shut up. I'd watch like it. to know the reason why. Kaylin had never heard of a sleep fairy. My parents told me not to talk to strangers. Strangers? I'm no stranger. I know all the girls and boys around the globe. I know their parents, their homes, their names. Why, I even know your name, Kaylin. Now, would a stranger know your name? Kaylin thought on it for a moment. Oh, hold on. No, I, I don't like not. that. I don't like that. That's like I know I'm, I know I said I'd let it play and I'm not doing it, but this this is very Pennywise the Clown. And if you're familiar with the original writing of Pennywise the Clown, it was based on creepy guys in white vans. Uh, that was like the original idea. So the the whole what's that thing Pennywise does where he's like, uh, uh, Mom tells me not to talk to strangers. And Pennywise is like, well, your mother's very smart. What's your name? Uh, well, I'm Pennywise. See, now we're not strangers. Like this weird building of trust with a kid. Uh, that's the vibe I got out of this. My parents told me not to talk My to strangers. My parents told me not to talk to strangers. Strangers? I'm no stranger. I know all the girls and boys around the globe. I know their parents, their homes, their names. Why? I even know your name. Kayla. Uh, now, would a stranger know your name? Uh, I don't like that. <laughs> Kaylin thought on it for a moment. No, I guess not. If you must know why I'm awake, mm. Mm. it's my camera. I don't like it. It's broken. And just like that, tears mm. welled up in Kaylin's eyes. Let me see. He has a different name in the subtitle. The subtitles have no idea what he's called. He has a different then name. Then the Gibbs need had an idea. Why don't I get this camera fixed for you? Perhaps that would help you sleep easier. You could do that? Of course, and I know just the place. A factory in my homeworld. I'll lead you to the portal. Oh. Just follow my voice. Oh, no. And the Kips need disappeared into the night. <laughs> I'll lead you to my portal. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like the Kaylin whole. followed close behind the. Yeah, kitchen. see, we're not strangers. You can trust me. I don't like that. Snapping photos to mark the way in case of getting lost. Oh! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! 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 I was right. Oh, I don't want to be right. I was right about the realistic photo thing. How this cartoon is just a child's depiction of what actually happened right because when we see the photographs when we see the photographs of the journey 
Um, hold on. Snapping photos to mark the way in case of getting lost. This isn't a cute little kid animation of a boy getting lost in the woods. This is a boy getting lost. These are photos of a boy getting lost in the woods. Oh boy, all right, let's go ahead. <laughs> I think what it is, someone said, isn't the camera broken? I think he can't see the pictures, but he can still take pictures, I think. At last, Kaylin reached a house. Mm. Oh no. Oh no, bro. No, no, no. Seems quite abandoned, oh. thought the boy. Uh. And dark. But there was the Kip's Needs voice again. Second. The portal to my home world's inside. Come along. Come inside, you can go to my own world. Or we can talk about this, or we can fix your stupid camera. I must have my camera fixed. Uh. So, oh in spite of his obvious fright, Kalen marched into the home. Oh no! Oh no! Ha. No! <laughs> what the heck is that? I don't like that. Is that a guy in a costume? Or is that like... Is that an actual supernatural thing? Oh man, I, I don't care for that. Uh, I'm gonna get jump scared so hard. Don't look over. I like the way it's cut. I like the way it's cut. Stop. Stop it. What the hell? Oh! Oh no! Oh! Uh, oh, I was right. It is about what I thought it Some was about. Later. Authorities discovered the basement. The rest of the boy was never found. What? What? <laughs> what? Hold on. Never found. Later, authorities discovered the basement. Okay, I thought that he was buried and his feet were poking out. That's what this was. But if the rest of him was never found, did, they, did he get his feet cut off? Or maybe... I don't know. Maybe something bad happened to that kid and his feet are left behind. Just, maybe they did cut his feet off. Oh, man. Bro. <laughs> that was horrible. I, I hate that in the beginning I called it and I was like, oh, these pictures are realistic. <laughs> so the, the animation is just a depiction of a child's animation. And if we go to the Mandela catalog and we look at this, blah, 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 only for it to come out in this. Man. Well, that's depressing. Really good, though. I liked it. <laughs> that, that was good. That was good. Let me go back to the credit screen. Yeah, written, directed, animated, scored, and edited 
by Brayden Ortiz. Brayden did a fantastic job. Narrative voice by Richard Stibbard also did a great job. That was a very good project. I like that. That was great. Yeah, that, that was solid. Yeah. Oh, hi, Alex. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, man. That was solid. That was awesome. Uh... Oh, is that the... Okay, so the Triceratops, I guess, is what they're calling it. Uh, oh, no, used as poster reference. Okay, I thought maybe the Triceratops is the, the doll thing. So with that doll, is that someone who is going to get kids for this guy in the basement? Or is that like a hand puppet or something he uses to get kids to come to the basement? Oh, uh, uh, that was awful. I can fix your camera. We're not strangers, see? Oh, man, that was brutal. I loved it. That was fantastic. All right, let's see. Let's see if they got anything else on their channel. That was good. A clip from Jaws. Oh no! A, a, a <laughs> claymation from eight. They did two claymations eight and nine years ago, and then just dropped that out of nowhere. That was good. That was really good. That was solid. Um, that was dope. Okay, cool. All right, well, what a banger. That was a good one to start off with. I'm glad that you all uh, just get thrown into the deep end with um, that. Uh, <laughs> glad I could traumatize you with that, Ben. Also, while we're at it, I don't know. How, how, do we want a long stream or a short stream? Because if it's uh, if it's going to be a long stream, then I, I, I kind of want to order DoorDash. <laughs> so I, I could be a total Twitch streamer and eat on camera. Uh, long, long, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, fine. Well, if I do that, then I'm gonna get food. How do we feel about? I think tacos. I think taco sounds good. There's a really good taco place nearby. We'll do that. Cool. All right. Anyway. So, Urban Spook's next. I got Urban Spook. If we're doing a long stream, I don't think Vita Carnus is that long. Uh, I haven't seen, again, I haven't seen either of these yet. I know nothing about them. I've just had them recommended to me a lot. If anyone else has any recommendations for other stuff going on, and we can't watch the new, well, we can watch the new Mandela catalog, but I can't react to it because I cheated and watched it as soon as it came out because I'm obsessed. Uh, and it was really good, but <laughs> I can't give a live reaction. Um, okay, so Urban Spook, I guess we start here at Faces. What a lovely preview frame. Uh, right? I don't think there's a playlist or anything. No. He's got community post. Okay, we'll start with Analog Horror Faces. Um, I have not seen Nori the Curse. What is that? I feel like I've heard that name somewhere. That name's familiar. This is a movie. Okay, okay. Yes, that's where I've heard of it before. Uh, yeah, I've seen it on Shutter. Yeah, that's where I've heard of it. And I've wanted to watch this. Okay, I knew the name was super familiar. Uh, but I, I do want to watch that. I can, people keep telling me it's good. Okay, yeah, we'll go ahead and start with Urban Spook. And I'm going to quietly order tacos as we do that. Oh, hold on. Our roles. Check. No captions. Okay. Oh, wait. I, did, I didn't do it on the last one, but I don't think it matters that much. Uh, we always read the description as well. Uh, because typically, those uh, description and captions are big clues in these things. I just started converting VHS tapes to digital. And I found a bunch of tapes in the basement of my apartment complex. This was one of them. Okay, so that's the setup for the series. Found footage. Um, six months ago, police found three paintings stored away in an abandoned storage area, each titled after recent murders. Okay. First victim was Carla Gray. 36 stab wounds to the face and all her teeth removed. On the back of the first painting, the title Carla's Teeth was written. Okay. Is this the painting? Well, it doesn't lie. 
Interesting. Second victim was Jack Graham, found drowned with 27 stab wounds in the perineum. Hold on. Most people tend to be during the stabbing. It's after the stabbing, but not so much. That looks like, uh, there's an artist out of Japan who makes work like that. Uh, that wasn't one of hers, but it reminds me of it. Wait, I, di I didn't read that, I was thinking about. Last victim was James Miller, found with his face torn off and his wrist slit open. That's a lot. Autopsy showed that James was alive for several days without a face. Okay. James's secret face. I guess that's his skin face, I imagine. That is, in fact, a skin face. That is, that is what that is. <laughs> Two months later, several more paintings were discovered. However, the titles of these paintings do not seem to be connected to any known cases at the time. It's all Tom. Lisa's secret face. Hey, Jimmy. All right. Oh, that, that's heavy. All right. Uh, Jennifer's last stare. All right, interesting. That was that that one was okay. Uh, public with the case. Victim. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I can't. I need to read. I I don't read at a super fast pace. I read at the degree one would speak it. After going public with the case and sharing the painting in hope of saving anyone that may be depicted, the police received three photos in the mail. All of them also titled. That one, that one has enough uh, ambiguity to it that I am like, that's that's creepy. That reminds me of a really disturbing picture I saw a while back. Interesting. Okay, so the idea is that this creature, whatever this is, is murdering all these people in brutal ways, and they look demonic or whatever. Okay, it's an interesting little two-minute short. I thought it would, uh, <laughs> I don't think you need to, that, there's some things that as a writer, as a story creator, you only bring them into the series if it's absolutely necessary, right? If, like, if that's what you're telling a story about, or if it's consecrated to a character. What, one, like, one good example is if you're telling, like, a biopic, like someone's true life story, then it'd be disrespectful to leave out details, right? To make it more comfortable, like, you want, you want the gruesome parts. Um, and one of those subject matters that you have to be careful about is, any, like, anything sexual abuse wise or things like that because that's a very obviously touchy subject and rightfully so um so typically the rule is or in my opinion it should be if your story can do without it don't use it right now if your story can't do without it i'm not saying it should never be used ever uh because you know there, there's plenty of like that is a thing that happens to people it is a tragedy so, you know, it, it, it does have a place in narratives. But if, it, if you're using it as side content, because, like, that, that got thrown in with burnings, murders, shot, whatever. Like, all of these really heavy ways to die. Uh, and then it's just like, uh, okay, okay, one of those is not like the other. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I, I, I do think it's an interesting concept of, like, this is the self-portrait it's this creature and it, you know this is kind of like the thing we talked about with the mandela catalog and uh, uh the kid with the camera um that like this is just a minor representation of a much more fearful thing that's still out there like this is just how the thing depicted itself and it's still out there uh so you know interesting idea it threw me off on that one regard but 
Um, yeah, like I said, interesting. I'm down, I'm down to watch more. Okay, so that was the first one. Also, uh, <clears throat> I know some people take my opinion uh, as important because I make videos about analog horror. Uh, don't. <laughs> I am a guy with a YouTube channel. Do not let this affect anything I say affect your opinions of the creator, of the creation. Do, as a creator, do not let this affect your opinions of your work unless I say you do good. Uh, but just my, my criticisms don't mean anything. Uh, I'm, ju I'm just talking to an audience. Uh, so anyway, after that, let's do The Lighthouse. Oh, it's, it's, it's self-portrait again. It's that, it's that thing again, okay? Same description as last time. Okay. What do, I also need to keep looking at chat. Uh, bit more vague in details. Uh, I have not seen the new Horror and Harmony episode. Alex says, this series completely ignores the aspect of show, don't tell, unfortunately. Yeah, if it doesn't change off the first one, I kind of get that vibe, but we'll see. I'm not, I'm not saying anything until I watch it, but then after we're done watching, I'll say stuff. So anyway, on to number two. The Lighthouse. Four weeks ago, a police officer named Bill Collins... Okay. Wait, 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 what that say? Hold on. That's uh yeah. <laughs> What did I just say about if if it's something that brutal uh, and it's not necessary? Like, okay, to not sound like a hypocrite, let me clarify. Stories like Blood Meridian, right? Stories where the 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 book itself is really a deconstruction of for one the cowboy myth the myth of the american west that you know all these got all these gunslingers out there were good family men looking to take care of their own the brutality of the story bears witness against that idea right because it's based off of real historic events and also what what i said earlier if you're talking about someone's real history then it's disrespectful to leave out the brutal parts because that is a part of the history and Blood Meridian does both. It, it deconstructs the American myth, and it also um, it, it is telling an accurate depiction of what the world was like. That's why it doesn't shy away from brutality on any side. So in stories like that, yeah, brutality, even the murder of children, makes sense because that is what the story is. That is the brutal truth that the author is getting across to us. But for, like, for a YouTube analog horror series to be like, the thing it said in the first one, and then like a two month old, that that's, yeah, it, anyway, I'm holding out hope, I'm holding out hope, we'll see where it goes, we'll see where it goes. Alright, the Collins family car was found 12 days later by the Oceanside, the car the police found a painting titled Long Necked Angel. Angel was indeed the name of the youngest daughter. Uh, that, yeah, that's gross. I don't like that. Yep. Search would lead to an old lighthouse, stand just a few miles away from the abandoned car. That takes me out of the, that takes me out of the, um, the, the, the myth, some, something like that. I mean, to be honest, it's kind of try hard is like full bore. Go, taking me so hard down like be disturbed that I've I'm pulled out of like oh I'm watching a series and I'm like this is a YouTube video <laughs> you know uh, 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 anyway um, it, it's like if a movie is too normally when I watch film when I watch media I'm sitting there like man this is so fascinating like look at look at this film uh, I'm fully engrossed in the story. What I don't even think of it as film. It's like this is a narrative that's being told to me. This is a story for the ages. But when something like 
just hits me like a truck like that. It's like, okay, glad you put that on your YouTube channel. <laughs> like I'm, inst I'm instantly pulled out of it. Anyway. See, aspects like this I like. I think it's interesting that there's this red-faced creature that you you can have you can have people get murdered, that's fine, but it's like your horror coming from like, oh, this is what the baby's body would look like. Like that's a bit much. Um But like you, you can have like charred corpses and the idea that there's like this red-faced man running around causing murders, that's cool. Just leave out the kid part. Um charred corpse of a missing teenager named Daniel Williams was found. You can kill teenagers, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Corpses belonging to Jennifer White and her daughter Lisa White. Although, I, again, I'm, I'm reading these at a talking speed. I need to hurry up. They've been missing for seven months. Okay. Wait, hold on. This is the Carr family, right? The Whites? No, the Collins. Okay, we're on to a different murdered family. So the Collins were the one that had the baby and everything. So then they go to a lighthouse while they're looking for the Collins. And it's an abandoned lighthouse. And the door... Oh! I thought they found this painting at the crime scene. This was on the front of the light... Okay, so this is on the front of the lighthouse. They go into the lighthouse. And there's another missing person unrelated to the Collins in that lighthouse. Okay? So now there's two missing families. Uh, <laughs> <and> they, <laughs> so they get there, they find the second missing family. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm following, I guess. And that's when they find... The, and this... Wait, what was the first guy's name? Wait, wait. I thought they were all one family. No, okay. Daniel Williams isn't at all related to the Whites who just come <laughs> to Lisa and Jennifer White. That's a different murder. There's like three <coughs> murder cases that have happened in this lighthouse, okay? And that, like, any... Again, storytelling. Any other time, it's fine to have a location where there's like three murder victims. But when you... If you deliver the information as like, here's a lighthouse where he stores his victims, then it's fine. But if you're like, well, they found victim number one, but while they were there, they found victim number two. But then after that, victim number three, it's, it's a weird and then, and then, and then like, um, flow for the narrative. found uh the barrel was filled with mangled meat and bones tests later show that belonged to the rest of the collins family okay all right i guess we're gonna see that now all right yep we're gonna see that now that's very bright Uh, that face is kind of creepy. I haven't seen that one before. All the other ones I've seen before, though. So, like, the, the effect is lot not from Urban Spook. Like, I've just seen, like, this picture, this picture floating around the web forever. Uh, is, is it saying that's the killer? Because that's, that's, I guess, kind of interesting. Okay. All right. How, how are we? Am I being too mean? <laughs> you all can be. Here, I'm going to order food <laughs> and you all can tell me if i'm being too mean to the series i, ju I just don't like I, d I don't like fictionalizing it's different in the way the kid with the camera did because it didn't it didn't dwell on it sure you can use kids being you know hurt implications like the kid with the camera was about a kid right but what was scary about it was like oh no what happened to him rather than like and then the baby was pulling yeah yeah, it feels exploitive, right? 
and there's no there's no hard line for it either there's not like okay well this is the the bar for entry of okay or not okay um there's no hard line it's all subjective it's all based on personal judgment what is and isn't allowed uh but for me this feels a bit over the line um Wait, hold on. What are, what are you all saying? Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not saying... Uh, look, a lot of people love Urban Spook. I don't want... I don't have anything against him. Could be a great guy. I'm just saying, for me, it feels a bit much on that front. Could change. Could change as it going. Who knows? But uh, I'm trying to read through some of the comments. No, I'm going back to ordering tacos. <laughs> before we get into the next one <laughs> i i also have to be careful and i feel bad about it because at the end of the day this is a creator right who is expressing themselves um it's a creator who's expressing themselves so they're making content putting it out for other people to see so i i really I, I, I don't want to say anything as like a full bore stifling of being like, oh, this, I, I would never imply that this guy shouldn't make art. And I don't, I really truly don't think he shouldn't. I'm just saying for my taste, he could dial it back. Cause again, I like some of the concepts of like, oh, well, it's a killer who leaves inscriptions of their faces around victims like that. That's an interesting concept. You can run with that. Uh, don't run with the part about babies. You know, <laughs> just a thought. Um, uh, the art itself is awesome. I just wish. Yeah, yeah. Just just like it, you, you have like, like two urban food because I'm sure he's going to see us so well. You have talent. There's interesting story here. Continue to refine it. I don't even know how old this guy is. I got to be careful about what I say. I don't want. I definitely don't want to stifle someone who's younger. Because let's be completely honest. When I was a kid, uh, riding horse, or more specifically, when I was like a teen, riding horse stories, I every one of my stories were like, and then she got stabbed, and there was blood everywhere, and it was terrible, and everyone died because I didn't get what like made me afraid of things. So I was just like super gross with everything. And like, that's part of your creative process, learning the steps. Um, and this could be where you want to end up. I mean, there's plenty of people who like find, I mean, just look at like the number of gore disturbing flicks that are out there. A bunch of people, you know, find their niche and they enjoy it and there's nothing wrong with that. Again, I'm just saying for me, th this is all subjective. Once again, my opinion means nothing. Um, getting shrimp tacos. <laughs> Those are really good. Uh, I know this is this is a great quality stream. Me ordering food while you all sit there, unable to do anything about it. There we go. Oh, shrimp. <clears throat> um. Damn. Uh, someone keeps saying portrait of God. We'll probably look at that after beat us. Uh, I'm not, we're not done with this yet. Uh, but like I said, I'm just ordering food. Okay. Uh, what's also throw in. I know this is such an enthralling stream. Um, yeah, yeah, like, it, and I also don't want to disrespect anyone in the audience who, like, watched this, thought it was cool. Like I said, there are interesting concepts here. I'm just saying, for me, leave kids out of fictional content if you can help it, or at least leave exploiting kids to this level man i don't even want to say it that way leave brutalizing depictions of kid as level for me out of content but i mean if you like that i'm not going to be like 
I make videos about, you know, stories of people dying and conspiracy theories. I'm not going to get on a high horse behind a pulpit and be like, ah, oh, you can't like this. Like, no, like whatever you want. I'm by no means a, a, a moral authority when it comes to what content is or isn't okay for YouTube. Um, again, I'll just preference. Okay. Hold on. We always tip our drivers well. Uh, and then I think I should be good. Yeah, okay. And we say, what did I do wrong? Yeah. I did something wrong. Hold on. All right, whatever. Cool. All right, next video. Sorry about that. Continuing. All right. Okay, based on everything I just said. <laughs> maybe. All right, maybe, maybe he's self-aware. You know, and he started putting it in there. Or is this one especially bad? <laughs> I say I go on that whole spiel and the first thing I see is trigger warning. Uh, <laughs> is it me? Is that what it is? Am I just triggered? Yeah, everyone's like, it's bad. How bad are we talking? Um, okay, we'll we'll start it. Now y'all got me worried. I'm scared, but not in the normal way. I'm scared watching these. I'm scared in a completely different way. <laughs> I was scanning through to see if there were any, like, images, but no, I don't think it go that far. Okay, so... Two kids went missing. Got two twins. Again, like dealing with kids is fine. It's like, ah, uh, this is what the body would look like if it was blah blah blah. It just feels gross. Which is fine, people like gross horror. I guess like that in isolation yeah okay all right well yep we're, we're skipping <laughs> we're going away from that uh is that what it gets hold on let me read the previews uh before i pull it up for all the kids um is that it is it is that just mentioned so it's about the brick and then that phrase pops up and then it immediately jumps to one week before their disappearance. Corey had been dared by two of his friends to spend an hour in a remote cabin near Tiger Lake. Did is it just a slide that needed to tell us that? And that's it? It just goes and goes about the story normally afterwards? Yeah, 
Yes, it does. It ju it just continues. It just it just had a slide, and that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right after I go on that whole spiel about how I don't know if you know the kids' depictions are that cool with me. It's just, okay, cranks it up to eleven. Um, again, I'm not criticizing anyone who likes it. Just not for me. Corino screaming that he had seen a face. According to his friends, Corey's left arm was badly bruised. Investigating the cabin, police found a wardrobe connected to a crawl space inside the walls. Corey's camera. See, like, this is close to being so good, right? Like, like, okay, pretend like we didn't see any of that first half, right? And all we got was. A young boy stayed in a cabin at Tiger Lake. He went inside alone with his digital camera while his friends waited outside. After just four minutes, he ran out screaming that he had seen a face. According to his friends, his left arm was badly bruised. While investigating the cabin, police found a wardrobe connected to a crawl space inside the walls. Like, all this, if you, again, if you start there, all of this is interesting lead up to... And a cool horror story, like, kid can't, ran out of a house in the middle of the woods, left arm was bruised, that's mysterious, right? And then he said he saw a face, and there is a connected crawl space inside the walls. Like, that is interesting. You could build something, but it's the fact that it started with, oh, well, uh, just so you know, at the end of the story, the kid gets mutilated and stitched in half with his dead sister. Like, what, just... Just do this part. <laughs> or not. It's You're an adult, maybe. I don't know who you are. You can pick what you want. But as for anyone out there, just build your whore naturally. And if it gets to disturbing places, then do it, you know, with, with purpose, with vigor, not just for shock material. Make it mean something. Creepy face. Oh, thank goodness. Is this what was in the wall? Or is this just pictures of, like, the area? See? Th okay. This is cool. He, he says he saw a face. His left arm just bruised up. And this is the only evidence there is. Like, cool. I like it. <laughs> Just stick, stick with that. <laughs> See, even, even. This face is believed. Yeah. Even if the story start, if it started with this, then I could be. I could be a little freaked out. Like if I if I wasn't so off balance because of the beginning, then like cutting to this face hard would be like a wow, that that is creepy. This is what the kid saw in an abandoned house. This is the face that was there. Like that could be intriguing uh and it could make me want to ask more questions about the series, but because I was like slapped in the intro um because it started with such like a train collision then now it's like okay i know i know there's gonna be creepy faces on here you already set a precedent it's it's like opening your film with the picture of the killer's face and him killing like the lead at the end of the movie and then starting the movie from the beginning like okay well you just <laughs> You wasted it. That was your that was your move. Um, and even then, I don't know if you know you could build up to some of the the concepts that Urban Spook sets up at the beginning. But again, who am I? I'm just a YouTuber. Taste is believed to be negative for disappearances. Um, if you read, yeah, you kind of have to earn that level of jump as, as in a story. You have to. You have to earn the brutality that you show. Those were two different phone numbers, I think. So maybe they do something, but. Okay. All right. We did 
in the walls. So now the clue, we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it. There's only three left and then we'll jump on. Uh, everyone's telling me to click off. Does it get worse than that? There is no way. Ain't no way. Maybe this was like so disturbing to people because it was shock value. Because everyone's been like, oh, Urban Spook's one of the most disturbing ever. Uh, and maybe it's just because it's heavy. I don't know. Well, I won't, I won't say, well, again, without knowing him, I'm not saying don't support him. I'm not saying he shouldn't make content. None of that, you know. I, I know nothing about them to say otherwise. I'm just saying, again, not for me, a little heavy. So let, let, me, let me do my parental reading. Has been helping police, last body. I also know there's, the other reason of being, because like, I did the disturbing movie. I was working. If, if there's brutal content out there, I've probably seen it. But I know there's there's probably kids watching right now, and I know there's kids just going to watch these clips later. And I have to be mindful of that. Uh, I'm not just going to be like, oh, haha, -ha, here's a very super disturbing concept that they're not ready for. I don't want to throw that in front of them either. So, um, candle wax. Okay, this one looks fine so far. This one's damn the kids. I'm not killing the kids. <laughs> um Yeah, you're right. Yeah, like so someone said, I made a video about Blood Meridian. I made a video describing, you know, horrific murders that actually did nonfiction take place. So I'm not going to be like, oh, well, you can't talk about, you know, horror or death or anything like that. It's just, again, the brutality of how you show it, how you depict it. Um, and specifically, like I said, sexual situations are particularly evil. Uh, so you got you got to be really careful about how you show that. And this one doesn't have the... the warning in it so I'm leaving it in this one though so I can quickly click off if need be. <laughs> no there will be no blood meridian spoilers I'll be shut up it's brutal that's all I'll say about it uh it's not Alex's If y'all are tired of it too, like I'm also, <laughs> as much as this is me sitting here talking, if you all don't like this, I will click off and go to something else. Just say so. Alex says, it just doesn't evolve or improve in any way. Disturbing for the sake of disturbing. I hate to hear that. Because again, there's good, there's good, there's meat here. Uh... It is an even mixture of yes and no. I think. All right, so how, how about this? Let's compromise, let's compromise. I said, you know, creators improve over time. Like you can go back and watch my first videos. They're nothing to write home about. They're not that good. So let's compromise and let's just watch the most recent one, okay? So we'll, we'll just skip to the end and see where it's currently at, all right? Does that, does, does it, are people, does that sound like a, uh, a middle ground, so to speak, that we can both get along? Okay, fair, fair. We'll see, see where it goes. Because again, I don't want to throw anything out there that people aren't ready for. I want to be respectful of that. Um, but also, the, a lot of people have asked me to watch this series for a long time. Because, again, a lot of people find it very disturbing, very interesting. I want to respect that as well. So, our middle ground, we'll jump to the end. We'll see, we'll see where it's at now, right? 
So we won't watch Clue, Witness, we'll go straight to Pigs. Cool. Wait, what was that in the beginning? I'm gonna regret this, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Police officer May okay. Off the stench coming from the barn. So fun fact, uh not fun act, they found the brutalized corp. Uh what do you mean by brutalized? Uh ha 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 let's get a little fast. Ah. Okay, alright, alright. Um ignoring that for now. Um so what I was going to say that was a fun fact, but not really a fun fact, actually a very disturbing fact. Uh, the, it's a known fact that pigs will eat anything that's meat, uh, and they're particularly ferocious about it. So if you were to, say, throw a human body at them, they would clear it in, like, a couple hours, just, like, down to the bone. Um... And that is a common way people, like, in the hills would get rid of bodies. Just throw them to the pigs. Because uh, pigs also, if they, like, smell blood, they'll go feral. They're, they are incredibly vicious animals. Even, like, the big fat ones you see on farms that you're like, oh, those things can't move. Like, they, they get it in them. Um, so, yeah, just <laughs> whatever. The video's titled Pigs and it says there is a stench from the barn. That's what I thought of. Uh, all right, so skipping that, what's it say? been handcuffed uh, her hands have been ripped right off okay We're done. All right. <clears throat> On to Vetus Carnus. <laughs> I, I know I know what that is. And we're done. We are done. All right. You, everyone who told me to click off of it, you win. You were right. I was wrong. Go ahead. Laugh at me. Ha, ha, ha. I learned my lesson. <laughs> it got so much worse. Okay. Uh, watch it on your own time if you're if you want to see it again I'm not going to put that in front of a whole audience and be like haha look at this uh, a little too uh, uh, too far so anyway Vetus Carnus uh, <laughs> um, let's see I haven't, I, haven't, I don't know anything about it either uh, I know it's 16 I know they're also I, I say short I know that these are like long I did not watch this Maybe it auto played at one point while I was asleep. A lot of the times I'll come to these videos and they're auto play they're auto played because I'll fall asleep during them. Um, so we'll get into that one. Yes, you were all right. I was wrong. Feel free to laugh at me. <laughs> I deserve it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, when you will she will she where is at now? Maybe <laughs> Maybe he learned his lessons. And everything will be okay. <laughs> Just. Okay. Anyway. Vetus Carnus. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I got ahead. Hey, good to see you too, Alex. Thank you very much. I hope I enjoy it. And good job on the new Mandela catalog. I love it. Can't wait to make a video on it. Um. Yeah, yeah, we, let's just say we were all wrong. So anyway, on Avita's Carnus. Someone said, watch this. Is this just a summary of this whole thing? Is that the only difference? Uh, it has extra stuff. Okay, so do I watch the episodes normally or do I skip to this? The main one has extra Watch the full research documentary, is what I'm hearing. 
to some people are saying, watch the shorter videos. This is urban spook all over again. <laughs> this, <laughs> there is a fight in the chat. People are... Y'all are killing me. Okay. Compromise once again. All right? All right? Listen. Calm down. Calm down. Everyone, everyone. Time out. Time out. Time out. Listen. What we'll do... Because I, I know the people who want me to watch the individuals. Full video is... Wait, 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 wait. wait. What did that say? Full video is the shorter one. For, okay. <clears throat> the reason that you all, I imagine, want me to watch the individual episodes is, like I said, there tends to be more stuff in the description, stuff like that, you know, contextual, whatever. So what we'll do is we will watch off of the full documentary, but for each one we get to, I will open the video in another tab so we can look at the description, analyze it, stuff like that. And like, so we, we look at all the aspects of the individual ones and then we watch the full ones, right? So we're doing that. Okay. All right. Fair, fair, fair. It's tough, but fair. All right. So open link in new tab, we'll watch off this one and then we'll go to one and get the pieces. Sure. Okay, dad. All right. All right. Documentary. Maybe it'll be more than that in the future ones. I don't know. We'll find out. Documentary is the Vita Carnis species. I also have no idea what Vita Carnis is. This is a ghost, if it's a monster, if it's what have you. Uh, but we'll find out. Oh, look at that. He's got them. Is that arranged by the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Yes, he's got them arranged by the stuff. Cool. All right. Let's go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Our rules. Turn on captions. We do. Okay. All right. Warning. The video talks about and shows imagery of things like gore, violence, death, flashing lights. As long as it's not horses, I'm fine. <laughs> all this is fine. This is all family-friendly kids content for YouTube. And I'm okay with it. It's the other stuff, not so much. On planet Earth. Life has thrived for millions of years. Creatures big and small have found ways to adapt and evolve to flourish in all types of environments. From barren wastes to lush forests, life can be found. Earth has homed these creatures since the dawn of life itself. Only until very recently, things have changed. New life forms have appeared all around the globe and completely changing the balance of nature and what we know about evolution itself. That is why we, at National Living Meat Research, have been studying these new species, trying to help educate everyone about these creatures and their wondrous ways of life. Can, can First, I, can I just, just time out? <clears throat> I am already more invested in this. Like during that little piece where so living meat researchers, I'm like, oh, is this a disease? Is it a bug? What is it? I am already far more invested in this than I was any part of Urban Spook. And the reason why is because I don't think the human brain is in a position to intake story and narrative whenever it gets hit by a truck, right? For example, if you have a conversation with someone, if someone walks up to you, and I'm not just, I'm not doing this to clown on Urban Spook or anything. Like I said, anyone should be able to make art. I'm doing this to talk about stories. If you have a conversation with someone you know, and they say you all start talking about sports or movies or what have you. Whenever you're talking to your friend, in your mind, you are not consciously thinking about this human being and the conversation you're having, right? You're thinking of the subject. If someone was to walk, if your friend was to walk up to you and ask you, hey, did you like the new Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Your brain doesn't go... There is this person walking up to me and talking to me and trying to ask me questions with language. You start thinking, how was the new Guardians of the Galaxy? Like you, you are like the conversation is layer one, the, the nature of the conversation itself. You are on layer two dealing with the topic. If a stranger runs up to you on the street and blows an air horn in your face 
and says, did you like the new Guardians of the Galaxy? You're not comfortable enough or situated enough at level one that you can start thinking about level two. All you're thinking is, why did this freak just blow an air horn in my face, right? Like, you're not going to engage with the story legitimately while you are not able to get past the first stage of it, right? So, because of that, if you start a narrative with just, like, here is a to-the-wall brutality in your face. So, anyway, there's this killer who's running around. Like, I've, I, I'm not going to engage with you at that point. You, you, blew, you blew your shot too early. Um, and, yeah, just I just wanted to say that I'm already more invested in this because it, it's reeling me in rather than trying to just freak me out like isn't this disturbing like yeah congratulations here's your medal anyway thrived for millions of years creatures big and small have found ways to adapt and evolve to flourish in all types of environments from barren wastes to lush forests life can be found earth has homed these creatures since the dawn of life itself I need to re-listen this part because i was thinking about only that. until very recently things have changed New life forms have appeared all around the globe and completely changing the balance of nature and what we know about evolution itself. That is why we, at National Living Meat Research, have been studying these new species, trying to help educate everyone about these creatures and their wondrous ways of life. First, what are these new life forms? Since their explosive arrival across the globe in 1931, there has been much debate on what these newcomers are, and where they came from. Are they extraterrestrials coming to invade Earth? Or are they demons who come from hell to purge humanity? From what our scientists have discovered, no. The origins of these creatures are solely to Earth, miraculously out of nowhere. We don't know why or how, but one thing is for certain, Earth is now their home. What these creatures are is mysterious and still not well known today. But here is what we do know. These creatures are comprised mainly of muscle tissue, organs, and bones. They greatly resemble animals with no skin, or store-bought meat. Because of these characteristics, they have been named accordingly as Vita carnies. Interesting. The carny okay, species okay. consume decaying, organic matter, but their main diet is composed of raw meat, not including their carnies' relatives. The carnies only appear in places where there is an abundance of crawl, which leads to the first creature of the carnies species. The crawl. The crawl is a Dope. growth of meat. Okay, okay, that... okay, okay. I see. It's set up like a, like this company making a documentary. But what, I, I was thinking about well, across the globe the last in 1931. Question, but... There has it been much debate on what these newcomers are right. and where they came from. And they keep spreading. Are they extraterrestrials coming to invade Earth? Or are they demons who come from hell to purge you, and organs, and bones? They pattern as vines, okay. meaty tendrils that closely resemble the small intestine, the only difference being the dark red coloration. These tendrils grow in a similar pattern as vines, mold, or fungi. A primary stem structure is the host to divisions of other, smaller branches. In each tendril contains a variety of veins, arteries, and other similar organs used to transport nutrients absorbed from its surroundings. The ends of these tendrils are equipped with organelles used. It, uh, it reminds me of the growths that are brought up in, um, I, I talk about so many of these things, Gemini Home Entertainment. Uh, whenever the, uh, the, the growths that are going out across the, uh, the town and it's like going up through people's houses and it starts to consume them, it reminds me of that to absorb water and organic matter necessary for growth. The source of these organic materials is mainly found in dirt and soil on surrounding surfaces. Using its root-like dendrils, it absorbs the material and processes it into usable energy. Although, the crawl also obtains energy through another means. Using a sophisticated form of photosynthesis, the dark pigmentation of the smaller branches is ideal for absorbing sunlight and therefore allowing solar energy to fuel the crawl's growth. Because of its efficiency, it thrives in almost all types of environments, easily allowing it to spread across the world, and can be found pretty much anywhere. 
Its recent inclusion in the ecosystem has caused many major changes in nature's balance. One may assume that the crawl's presence may outcompete any other competitors, but due to its unique life cycle, where old branches fall off and decay into nutrient-rich compost, all forms of life seemingly flourish instead. The crawl's abundance grants plenty of nourishment to all animals, from plants feeding on the decayed crawl, herbivores thriving on increased plant population, and carnivores feeding on both the abundant prey, and are able to eat the crawl as well. The presence of all these animals leave behind waste, which will be broken down and consumed by the crawl. I'm, I'm sorry, I just realized, I forgot I was on stream. Uh, I just realized I haven't been talking and it's just me staring, but I am listening and I'm invested. I apologize, I will talk when there's something for me to talk about. And the cycle about. begins again. This form of symbiosis leads to an environment where all populations thrive. Humanity also uses the crawl to our advantage. Because of the supernatural rate of growth and its richness in nutrients, Wait, on, it has I'm been sustainably cultivated into the well. The presence of all these animals leave behind waste, which will be broken down and okay, consumed by the crawl, and the like, populations here. thrive. Humanity also uses the crawl to our advantage. Because of the supernatural rate of growth and its richness in nutrients. Oh, what was it? That was cool. Hold on. Because of the supernatural rate of growth. Radio tower overgrown within crawl. Interesting. Oh, cool. So as he's describing the benefits of it, why it matters, there's these hints that it is. As, as we can imagine, a trouble, like it's becoming a problem. In nutrients, yeah. it has been sustainably cultivated oh, into domestic that. farms. The crawl is harvested and processed into fertilizer, which greatly increases crop yield and quality. The crawl may also be used as a food source for humans, and reliably so. But due to its unkindly appearance and taste, it has yet to reach cuisine standards. The crawl also plays a very important role in the next creatures that we have been studying. Sometimes, in a crawl populated environment, a node of meat may develop on one of the branches. This node will fall off and grow into a functioning organism, and go to live on as an independent animal. This leads us to the upcoming species that we will be discussing. The first of these creatures are, the trimmings. The trimmings. Whoa, I saw a face are small animals. Hold on. Discussing. Whoa. The first of these creatures like are eyes. the trimmings. Or was that an old, like... Discussing. The first of these creatures are the trimmings. I'm probably not going to hit it, but... Just in case I do... Super, super, a super interesting streamer here. There we go. What on earth? Yo! It's like it's some old, it looks like it's a coloring book or something, but it looks like um, an old prophecy or like an old tale that relates to them. That's dope. The okay. Trimmings. Trimmings are small okay, animals. Okay, all right, that... all right. So, again, we set the deal. This is the second video, so we go look at it in the uh, in the timeline, right? So maybe maybe there's not much to look at. It's just, uh, is that was this first video the exact same beginning? Because of the super Ending, creatures are the trimmings. Yeah, and then just leads into the trimmings. Okay, all right. This is good. I like it. This is interesting. Resemble skin. So, so basically, the the I mean, what the word for it? Uh, the growth. Uh, but he called it something specific. Greatly the increases crawl. crop the, the yield crawl. and quality. So the crawl is a composter in the environment that's grown everywhere, and people can't eat it, but it's getting to be a problem. And it grows these clusters of meat, it calls it. Then the meat falls off and becomes trimmings. Interesting. The trimmings. Trimmings are small animals that resemble skinned raccoons. 
They are commonly known to have a <laughs> skin raccoons. Head, small eyes, nose and ear holes, and an agape mouth. They are also equipped with a diversity of limbs. All individual trimmings are unique, each with a different body shape, number of limbs, and other characteristics. One thing they all share in common is that they are made mostly of meat tissue and are a maximum of 20 centimeters in length, no larger than a basketball. Its life starts with its separation from the crawl. It will wonder to find anything that is edible and able to consume. Although it is an omnivore, being able to hunt meat and forage for plant matter, trimmings are almost entirely scavengers. Their diet consists of rotting plants and meat, including but not limited to fruits, vegetables, roots, seeds, insects, and deceased animals. Although its appearance is unsightly, it is a cowardly <laughs> creature, only fleeing, screeching, and hiding when threatened. Because of its lack of defensive traits, it lies near the bottom of the food chain, making it easily overpowered and picked off very regularly by predators. Naturally, its population would eventually die out, but this is not the case. The crawl constantly I may not, I may not try to hit that one as hard, but... This is not the case. Its population would eventually die out. Uh, this is not the case. Uh, we'll, we'll fine, fine, fine. We'll do it for him. Just because I'm curious. <laughs> not Ambiomo, what? No, I don't want... What, what's that mean? What do they even mean? Okay. Population would eventually die out. Mash trimming infestation. I like that. It's cool that it, it's popping up how it's like an infection around the world. As this guy in the documentary is talking about why it's like a useful part of our society. It's not Yes. The crawl constantly produces a large quantity of trimming notes, keeping up their numbers. Naturally, trimmings can be found wherever there is a crawl. You can use those crawl. keys. What do those keys do? Hold on. Where, where are those even at? Off of working these things. Hold on. It's a number lock, right? Yeah. So if I do that, then shift. Just skips, right? No, I don't, don't want to go that far. What keys are you pointing at? The the Alt F4. No, I'm not. I know that. <laughs> don't get me on that one. <laughs> oh, oh, these two. Yeah. What do they do? Changes the speed. Wait. No. You can click through frames? My, my entire YouTube career of doing these ARGs, I thought you have to put it on 0.25 and pray. You just, you just gotta catch it. And that's how I've made every video I've done up until this point. I could have just slid through the frames. <laughs> you know what? You know what, everyone? You know what? God is real. Because if, if it wasn't for divine intervention, there is no earthly explanation as to why I am where I am today. Because I, I should not be here. I am like a child with his CDL license behind an 18-wheeler. Just a baby driving millions of dollars in goods down the interstate. That's, that's what I am right now. And it's somehow worked out this long. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, to find anything that is edible and able to consume. Although it is an omnivore, being able to hunt meat and forage for plant matter, trimming. Go ahead. Finish. Get out of your system. I can see you all. I can see I can see the laughings, the boomer comments, the, the, the L's.
There it is. Yep. Yep, there it is. There's a key for it. There's two keys. You can go forwards and backwards. I remember, like, with my dad, he would say stuff like, oh, well, what if, what if I want to watch a channel, you know, what if I want to record something, I've watched somewhere else, where's the recording go? Does it still, and I'd be like, um, how does he not understand how tech works? But now I'm him. Now I'm my dad. <laughs> Blown away that there's a, there's a frame selector. Well, I can tell you that uh, future ARG projects are going to be twice as fast now because uh, it turns out I don't have to sit there and, and pause on the image all the time. So I can just pick it. I can just go. I can select it and be done. I've, I've had some of you all had a moment. A few of you guys had to have a moment of clairvoyance whenever I said... What do those keys do? Where are they at? The greater than, less than, that doesn't do anything. <laughs> Just this, the, the moment of clear, of realization. <laughs> okay. I'm glad, I'm glad that was live for everyone to witness. ...are almost entirely scavengers. Their diet consists of rotting plants and meat including, but not limited to, fruits, vegetables, roots, seeds, insects, and deceased animals. Although its appearance is unsightly, it is a cowardly creature, only fleeing, screeching, and hiding when threatened. Because of its lack of defensive traits, it lies near the bottom of the food chain, making it easily overpowered and picked off very regularly by predators. bottom threatened. Okay, so what we're about to get is a description of me as a YouTuber. This is, this, what he's about to say is me in the YouTuber landscape. Because of its lack of defensive traits, it lies near the bottom of the food chain, making it easily overpowered and picked off very regularly by predators. That's me. So, anyway. Naturally, Literally. its population would eventually die out. Which is not the case. The crawl constantly produces a large quantity of trimming nodes, keeping up their numbers. Naturally, trimmings can be found wherever there is abundant crawl. Trimmings grow at a decent pace, reaching maturity at around 7 months, having a maximum lifespan of 2 to 4 years. Also Although they are plentiful, humanity has no proper way to implement trimmings into society. Their overabundance has even considered them pests. Oh, wow. Due to them digging through trash bins oh, and making cool. excessive noise at night. Besides all of this, some people still keep trimmings as pets the, and relatively the art, domestic. The artwork looks a lot like Trevor Henderson's. Uh, the guy who made Siren Head. I really like Trevor's work and this reminds me of it. Kate them. Nuisance or not, trimmings are a wondrous creature, from their plentiful numbers to their skittish nature. They are truly a thing to behold. The next species on our list is the meat snake. I don't the like the sound of that. The meat snake. Uh, what? That can't be good. What is it? Again, we said we go to these. I think they're all just going to be documentary. Yeah. Uh, I got, yeah, I'm glad you all are having fun with that. Um, children. Uh, they are truly a thing to behold. I want to The next catch species that image. on our list is the meat snake. Because now I know that I can just select. So I will simply do that. Man, this is so much easier. Do you know what it's like being like, oh man, I have to get this image for everyone to see? Do you know how mad I would get at these analog horror creators for putting something on screen for like two frames? Do you know how frustrating that became? The vitriol I had for them? Only to now find out that I could have just, I could have clicked on it. Could have just clicked on it. Okay, so, hold on, did I, that was, stop. To their skittish nature, they are truly a thing to behold. The next species on our list is 
the meat snake. Okay, so now there. Just so man discovers fire. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh. Interesting. Driving something, a great storm struck. Something, the boat of the boat, the royal family rode and mashed the prince and something into the sea. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Wait, go forward a few frames. Okay. Wait, no, I'm, I'm clicking the big, I'm clicking the big arrows. I don't want to click the big ones. I want to click the small ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the only frame that lets you see it that clearly. Interesting, okay. The meat snake. It's, there's some, it, sh it in the first one it showed a, a, a like family, like a royal family. And I was talking about there was a wreck that uh, the prince, it said they were all thrown to sea. Interesting. The meat snake is a worm-like creature made of a variety of types of meat coated in a transparent skin-like membrane. Its size varies during its lifespan, depending on how much it consumes. When it first separates from the crawl, it is only a few centimeters in length. Eventually, it will reach an average length of 5 meters. Although, under extreme conditions, like natural disasters, war, or plague, it can greatly surpass this length. Yeah, I don't feel bad about it anymore because I can just Masters, flip, flip war, to it. Or plague, it can greatly Largest meat snake ever discovered. During a sweep of underground settlements made during the war, a massive sized meat snake was discovered stuck inside an underground valley. The beast was measured at 40 meters. <laughs> My word. For us that speak American, that's like 120 feet. Uh, it is believed that bodies gathered during the war were fed to the creature. Oh. Causing it to reach the unbelievable size. And then it's got stuff redacted, but then it says cult activity. This is so interesting how it's doing it. Because it's talking about how, like, the, the documentary is describing them as just a normal part of our ecosystem. But we get these frames of, like, the growth overcomes radio towers. Now people can't talk to each other. Uh, there are, the there, there's this, this lore of a royal family looming in the background and now it's saying uh that like that these snakes grow to hundreds of feet underground and that there's cults worshiping them there is a world happening just outside of the one that's being portrayed to us and i like that that's very cool it's it's like um it's like the world is ending but we are only reading about it in the newspaper right like there's only glimpses of how bad it really is as someone else is explaining it to us and i like that it's a cool the, the horror, again, it falls back on the horror being rooted in the unknown, but we're not completely left in the dark. We have enough clues to work out what that unknown might be. I like it. Please surpass this length. The meat snake's diet consists entirely of dead animals or parts. A meat snake is incapable of consuming a healthy, living organism. That's good. The meat snake locates its food by using a tongue-like organ covered in sensors so to touch really and feel its environment. Thing. The sensors catch particles of decaying meat, notifying the meat snake that there is food nearby. This process shares many similarities to regular snakes, hence the meat snake's name. Once it locates the corpse, the meat snake will open its jaw and swallow the entire body whole. Once the entire body is consumed, the meat snake's stomach will release a variety of chemicals. Some will break down soft tissue like skin, and the connection points between muscles. Others chemicals will then ferment and preserve the tissue to keep it from breaking down for as long as possible. After that, the remaining flesh and bones will move along the meat snake's tract, and slowly be implemented into its own structure, extending the meat snake. Oh, Unsatisfactory it's... parts like skulls, pelvises, hair, and fingernails will be excreted. 
Speaking okay, the snake skulls. isn't like a, an animal that's gathering protein to, you know, build its size. It is literally ripping apart, like, the pieces of flesh and pasting it onto itself. Huh, that's, I love it. That's brutal. The meat snake will take the skull from the consumed organism and use it as its own. Each meat snake has its own skull, each corresponding to what that one has consumed. During its lifespan, it will swap or replace these skulls if needed. Yo. A meat snake's lifespan depends entirely on how much a meat snake the consumes. The, the longest one has lived for was 28 years. The meat snake has no predators and is immune to disease, due to its preserving chemicals. The only significant ways a meat snake can die is through starvation, burning, or complete destruction of the meat snake's membrane coating. You gotta burn it. Burn Interestingly, it cool. the meat snake is the only <laughs> member of the Carnies family that is able to reproduce. When a meat snake reaches oh. an excessive size, and is in the conditions to do so, it will commence mitosis, splitting itself in two, then the now two meat snakes will <laughs> go on their separate ways and live on as two distinct organisms. Brutal. Meat snakes can only be found in moderate temperature climates, not too hot, not too cold. Oh, just Their population you know? depends entirely on the amount of corpses available. Where there is death, there are meat snakes. Oh, that's cool. As wars happen, these mass death, advantage. these things show up to meat eat Meat snakes are a very efficient and clean way of disposing of any meat products. The preserving fluid within the meat snake's I, body I like the subtle the mention that as it's talking about meat products that can be disposed of, it shows a human. <laughs> That's cool. Snakes are a very effective. And also, like, imagine, like, trying to retrieve your dead from the battlefield, and there's just these things eating them everywhere. Man. Efficient and clean way of disposing of any meat products. The preserving fluid within the meat snake's body disinfects the carrion, preventing the spread of disease. Humans use meat snakes in butcher shops as a waste bin, dispose roadkill. Within war on the battlefield to dispose of festering oh, they bodies use and them on purpose. and within oh. zoos to dispose of deceased animals. <laughs> oh. They are extremely tame, not caring if any creature is around extremely them, only tame. acting defensively when it is within consuming a meal. This means they are very easy to tame. Overall, meat snakes <laughs> are a marvelous <laughs> creature with a very interesting way of sustaining itself. It is an amazing experience to encounter one. As long as you don't mind the smell. Our next creature is the mimic. So this ser this series is awesome. This series goes hard. Okay. All right. Let's roll. Let's roll back to that last one. I'm sorry if I'm not talking a lot. I am like fully invested in what what it like. Yeah, there is this entire biological tree of what these things are, and then back to the fairy tale. Which I can't read. Something. The prince eventually walks, maybe? The prince mumbled. Or fumbled. His way into a nearby cave. The prince. Something. Uh, could to put himself under a healing sleep. Okay, so after the boat crash, whenever, after the boat crash, uh, the prince lived, probably not anyone else. He, he stumbles into this cave and it says he wants to be put into a healing sleep. He's at his wits end. Cool. I love the it. There, there's like supernatural lore, the lore of the world getting destroyed and science like merging. D I'm here for it. Bipedal. Uh, by the rule, we agree. No, don't skip that far. By the rule we agreed on. I don't know if this is doing anything, but I'm agreeing. I'm sticking by my word. Okay, anyway. <laughs> the Mimic. The Mimic is a bipedal creature with uncanny similarities to humanoid anatomy. They greatly resemble humans without skin. Without an exaggerated... Look at the OG vid at the end. Okay. The one we just did. Or maybe maybe they mean this one we're about to do. Okay. Mind the smell. Make stuff. Our next creature is the Mimic. You know. 
Maybe they mean the one we're about to do. We'll come back to that one after. Okay. Features. These features include extended finger length, longer limbs, bulging, empty eyes, and their most prominent feature, a wide, tea-filled smile. Oh. Although it resembles a happy oh, face, no. this is due to coincidence and is only how their facial structure is this shaped. This is due to coincidence, I'd say so. The while the mimic contains much more teeth than humans, and their teeth is comprised almost entirely of incisors, with some canine and premolars in the back. This is tooth composition is ideal for biting down onto meat and swallowing Chuck's hole. A mature mimic's diet is comprised entirely of human flesh. Oh, no music for that one, Mr. Happy Narrator. Because of this, they're found solely people. around human populated areas. Oh, that's comforting. The mimic's life cycle is made of three stages. In the first stage, a young the, mimic. I, I, I like from the how call. I like how they before it was like. What are y'all talking about, Chuck? <laughs> Did it say that was there a joke I missed? Um, I like how before it was like he was maintaining this facade of like, oh well, you know the little skin skinned raccoon things, they can't really do a lot, so we just kind of leave them be. But the meat snake, uh, you know, they're used by zoos and you know butcher shops and stuff. And uh, yeah, this this thing eats people. So that's just that's what it does. <laughs> closely resemble their trimming relatives, but are thin, sleek, and only have four appendages. In this stage, oh, the young mimic will hunt small animals, moving on to larger and larger as they grow. Once large enough, it will begin metamorphosis into the next stage of life. Once fully transformed, it will resemble the description mentioned in the beginning. Its hunting style changes and becomes much more complicated. Mm -hmm. It now stalks and feeds uh -oh. only on humans. It will locate human populated oh. area and begin its search for an easy target. To blend in, it may use objects to conceal itself. These include clothing, mannequins, and furniture. Once a target has been found, the mimic will observe its prey and learn its routine and when it is most vulnerable. This is typically when the human is asleep at night. Once the prey is within position, the mimic will advance silently until it is close enough. Fellas, I already have enough things to think about whenever I'm falling asleep at night to keep me from falling asleep. I don't need to think about a skinned person who looks like that <laughs> slowly getting closer in a way I can't hear him until he ne he eats my skin, okay? I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I don't want this right now routine and when it is most vulnerable. This is typically when the human is asleep at night. Once the prey is within position, the mimic will advance silently until it is close enough. The mimic will then execute and immediately begin consumption. Once the mimic has had its fill, it will leave the scene, a fair distance away from the human population, and begin to digest its meal. Although, in the case that a human is awake, a mimic will use a variety of sounds to either lure or startle prey into cornering themselves. The DoorDash just got here, and they knocked on the door, and it, I'm, it went straight through me. I am cold all over. Oh my word! Ah, as soon as it said they will use sounds to lure their play, knock knock knock. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Someone, everyone's like it's not DoorDash. Do not go to DoorDash. Mimic will use a variety of sounds to either. They're knocking again. They knock twice. Hold on.
So guys, the DoorDash is in here. There's no one here. I, I am wigged out. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I, I'm not I am not kidding it was plain as day just like three knocks and then the second time it happened there were two I, I swear I'm not kidding I, I promise you, I, you saw my reaction that jumped the second time. I promise you. Ollie. Ollie, you're making my dog come in here. Ollie. Ollie, come sit on the couch. Ollie, come here. He was asleep. Come here. Come here. Come here. Good boy, Cal. What's up? Good boy. Good boy. You're going to sit right there. And if a mimic shows up, you're gonna beat him up, okay? Does that sound good? All right, good boy. Okay. No, it's not what I said. No, don't follow me. It's not what I said. <sighs> okay. He's he's <laughs> he's he's in between my legs now. He's just under the chair. I guys, I don't. I'm wigged. <laughs> I'm freaked. Okay. Although, in the case that a human is awake, a mimic will use a variety of sounds to either lure or startle prey into. Is forms. that the video? It's awake. A mimic will use a variety of sounds to either lure or. I want to cry. I'm so upset. I'm so frustrated by that. Anyway, that, that, who, if anyone knows who made Vita Cornus, good job. <laughs> the, you don't get how well that worked. I'm home alone. The door is to my right and the knot came out of the right channel. If it had came out of the left channel, I would have been like, was that a sound effect? But because I was waiting on someone to come to the door and it came out of the right channel, I was like, oh, that's clearly the door, right? Man, what a, 
This is why I'm glad I did it live, because what a I never would have been able to convince anyone of that. If I explain to you, if I make a video on Vita Carnus and I'd watch this alone, and I was like, no, you guys don't understand. I was freaked out. I thought the knock was real. Like, it wouldn't mean anything. But now it means something. Now I have footage. Now there's proof. Everyone gets to laugh at me. <sighs> All right. Anyway. Well done. <laughs> And this all goes back to my thesis. If you get into the story, you will, it will scare you more. That's how it always works. <sighs> all right. Or startle prey into cornering themselves. Once a human is that, in place, it will startle, startle prey. prey into cornering them. Let me hear that knock one a more time. will use a variety of sounds to either lure or startle that prey into cornering it just then it gave me a chill because it's it's such a good knock effect. If anyone's wearing headphones, it is all right channel, and it's it's ah, uh, what a good job. Okay. Honoring themselves. Once a human is in place, it will swiftly attack and kill the helpless target. What was that? What was that kill the helpless before? target. Once a human is in place, it will swiftly attack and kill the helpless target. This is really good. If I haven't made that apparent enough by my reactions, this is very well done. Um, I'm go For now, I'm leaving one ear off. <laughs> Fight me, fight me, fight me, fight me. Like a man, come on. Put him up, put him up. Throw down, do it. Do it! No! <laughs> no! this who made this do right is that was that the name at the end of the credits yeah okay let me find this guy that was Okay. Hold on. He follows me on Twitter. That's so cool. How does this guy only have 3,000 followers? Okay. That was insane. Uh, all right. So... For one, this whole series is very well set up, very well done. I like all the all the different creatures of being incorporated in the lore. All that's cool, but that moment in particular, I I watch a lot of internet horror, like a lot a lot of these stories when they pop up, right? Like the majority of them, I would say. And I'm I I'm used. It's it still gets me 
like the horror still work, but I'm used to digital effects, right? That's just the standard. And it makes sense. You know, most of these guys are making their videos for free, right? Of course. Uh, and a lot of them are able to do amazing things with digital effects. So when that scene was happening, I thought maybe he had a prop hand. And I'm like, that's so cool. He has a prop hand. This dude built the whole face. He built the creature. When we saw this guy earlier, I was like, okay, cool. We'll get like, you know, maybe a, a, a Henderson-esque drawing of it similar to the trimmings, right? It'll be something like this with that face. But then he said, nah, we are eating good. Look at that. Look at that. It's smile and all. It looks like a human. It, it looks in the way alternates are described in the Mandela catalogs as they're things that are trying to look human, but they don't know how. It's like a skinned alternate. It's so strange looking. Man, this is incredible. Where have you been all my life? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's so creepy. This thing perfectly silent floating across your room look oh, that's so good what a great effect hats off man i didn't i didn't think i would ever see something like that out that what a great job all right man a million percent i'm here for it dang dude yeah, yeah, so so there's two we're halfway through. There's more of these things. That's so cool. Okay. The next stage of the mimic's life cycle has two potential morphs it may develop into. If a mimic has a consistent supply of food, it will develop more human-like features. It will grow skin hair, and by the end will look nearly identical to a human being. It now can blend entirely into civilization, and lure other humans more effectively. The second type of morph happens when a mimic receives an overabundance of food. It will grow into a larger, more evolved hunter. Its proportions will increase in length, and its humanoid features will fade away. It grows a thick, dark coating of a flexible skin, which is highly durable and increases in strength the more the elder you, mimic consumes. You, you remember that thing I, I mentioned whenever we were talking about, like, uh, the kid with the camera and stuff like that? How it's so... Someone said atheist alternates. <laughs> That's funny. But you remember how whenever I was talking about, like, the kid with the camera stuff, how it's so scary, like, the whole ch children's things, because we know that this is just a placeholder for what it really looks like. But Vita Carnus has showed us that we will see full force what it actually looks like. So whenever they describe stuff like, oh, well, this rendition of it is much taller and loses its human features, I get chills like, are you going to make us look at it? Are we going to have to see what the real one looks like? I don't want to do that. This excludes the face, which is Yo. now coated in a pale pink skin. The mimic's teeth have also moved deeper into the mimic's throat, oh. leaving its mouth a toothless grin. Oh. It uses the dark hue of its skin to hide seamlessly within a dark environment. Its skills have also been heightened. This makes an elder mimic one of the most efficient predators on the planet. Because of the obvious threat this poses on humanity, <laughs> nations around the world have released instructions on how to be able to fend for yourself in a mimic encounter. Here are the instructions. 1. Avoid going out alone if your location is known to have mimics, or there have been mimics. Oh, sightings. this is so good, okay. 2. If you encounter a stationary mimic, seemingly unfazed by your presence, quietly leave the location and alert your local authorities. 3. If the, pursued the noise by a mimic, of that thing get yourself the into ah. a position where you are able to flee. 
Mimux will rarely attack if a person has a clear escape route. 4. In the event that you have been cornered by a mimic, roll into the fetal position, protecting your neck, face, and vital organs from attack. Oh! Make as much noise as you can just, to alert any other people. Because it's just gonna maul on Five. you. Oh. If you have a weapon, do not use it. A mimic is fairly resilient, and any strikes or shots on a mimic is not effective enough to bring it down in time. Instead, use it as a barrier between you and the mimic to block any attacks. 6. In a situation where a mimic is hunting in the immediate area, and is not aware of your position, hide somewhere low, like under a bed or behind other furniture. A mimic will not linger too long to search for prey, and will move on. Be safe, and avoid any encounters with a mimic at all costs. Guys, I'm still wigged out over that knocking. Next up, the harvester. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God all that mimic stuff is over with. Oh. Oh, I felt like that was never going to end. That was like a 40-minute segment because I kept, I kept having new panic attacks. Oh boy, between the the knocking and the face we're in the one bit. Oh, we did it, boys. It tis I, the guy who made it through a single YouTube video. Oh. How how are we doing, kids? So yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go back and watch the end of the OG. I think I still have to get to the, the fantasy clip too, the screenshot. Oh, let me turn the video quality up. What's it at? 480. I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was doing that. Oh, I could have been looking at it in high def. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Look at this guy in high definition. Oh, it's such a good effect. Movies are back. <laughs> Cinema. I remember just being like, wow, he did a whole hand and then the eye pops out. Man, so well done. Beautiful. Oh, I want to kiss it. in, in Because it's so terrible. Oh, man. Art. I love it. I love it. Yeah, the VOD will be up. Uh, we did it, boys. We got him to turn it up. Oh, creator in chat. What creator? Oh, Darian? Darian's in here? Yo, no way. Yo, my guy. Oh, big fan already. Only 18 minutes in. Big fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, the, the, the advice the voice gave was to uh, uh, just hide and don't use your weapon, which I also agree would probably not be the best move. It didn't work for this girl, right? Man, well, Darren was Darren isn't here if he wasn't here. Next up, the harvester. Can we get our fairy book? There, there it was. Can we actually read these now? Are you telling me I could have been reading all of these? Okay. Uh, did you know that you can skip to frames and uh, you can also select the quality of your videos. Really, you can do that stuff? I figured out how to use YouTube two days ago and just... The branches. And somehow have two million subscribers. This node will fall off and grow into a functioning organism and go... If, if, I, if I was trying to start YouTube, if I was a guy trying to start YouTube and I saw me where I am now, that would be my Joker origin story. That would be the last straw to see that I... Have come as far as I have. Like, oh, I can I can turn quality up to read, and I don't have to pause it really fast. To live fast. on as an independent animal. <sighs> okay. Right, us to the upcoming species that we will be discussing. The first of these creatures are the trimmings. Okay. Okay, I can't read this one that well. There was a distant kingdom the kingdom was the queen and the prince the royal family well, let me get rid of these 
I think I can get rid of these all together because they're not the voice is pretty easy to understand um, I'm glad you all enjoy me doing that because I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing it uh, they something and see to discover new places. Okay, so that's our basic setup. They set out to see, and then we know that there was a crash, but I can read what it says now. The next species on our list is the meat snake. <laughs> yeah, I could just read it. During the travels on one of their voyages, a great storm struck. It was so powerful, it swayed the boat, the royal family rode, and pushed the print. I think that says road. The royal family uh, road, or maybe it says died, uh, and pushed the prince out and into the sea. Right. Then so we got that. There's a royal family who traveled by sea. There was a great storm, and the prince seemed to be the sole survivor. And then we got the one about the cave. It's, it's just plain as day. I was trying to make it out. But it's just, you can just read it. That's, <laughs> I've made this job so much more difficult on myself than I should have. I have been reading blurry text and pausing on videos. So much. I need to redo every one of my ARG series because there, yeah, I could find so much more information now. After being stranded at sea, the young prince eventually was cast to an island. Injured, the prince stumbled his way into a nearby cave. The prince used what magic he could to put himself into a healing sleep. All right, so the family was magical. Prince used the magic, put himself into a healing sleep. YouTuber since when again? I don't know, bro. Like yesterday, apparently, the way I've been acting. Be safe and avoid any encounters with a mimic at all costs. When that pizza does get here, Next it's going to kill me. The Harvester. All right, and then we got this one. Uh, yeah, they're oh yeah. By the way, the taco place was closed, so I went with your all's advice and got pizza. So, okay, and then this one said, no, it's not. I keep hitting the wrong keys. I keep hitting the normal arrows because that's what I'm used to. The heart. Okay. Okay, there we go. But the prince's sleep was long. He slept for what seemed like forever. As he slept, the land around him changed and grew. It was unrecognizable from what the prince first arrived, but the sleep still needed time to heal the prince, much more time, but it kept the prince safe while he rested, guarding him from the elements as the land changed. Fascinating. Okay, so the, the sleep puts him into a, uh, a deep slumber. Years go by, perhaps. Interesting. The harvester. Okay, and I said, I told that guy I would go back and go to the end of this one. So let's see. For one, that... Just to make sure, yeah, that's about 7.40. The Mimic. Stop. Freeze. The Mimic is a bipedal creature yeah. oh, with wait, uncanny no, similarities to humanoid anatomy. They greatly resemble humans without skin, with added exaggerated features. These features Oh, there is a new segment over here. The Harvester. Okay. Thank you, whoever. Oh, no, it's back here. It's back here. It's back here. I don't like that. Ah! Okay. Oh, it's the sound of them getting eight. Oh, and there's blood flicking on the wall, and you can hear the you can hear the bone breaking. <laughs> oh. Fellas. I think I might be in love. <laughs> I, I, I felt this way about a girl in a long time. I tell you what, <laughs> you know, what I mean? like this is hitting all the high notes for me, from like the the effects to the lore to the hidden lore to like the presentation. Like this is this is rubbing me the right way. I tell you what, she is special. Oh boy, so great, so great. Okay. The harvester. I think my food just got here. Did it just get here? Yes, it just got here. Okay, I'm going to go get the food, and then we will continue with the harvester. So good!
we are back. Uh, the pizza, by the way, for those asking. Papa John's stuffed crust, pepperoni. I'm basic and like to pretend I'm a child, which I am effectively, as we've been able to tell by my computer skills. Does anyone ever eat ranch with pizza? I'm not going to do that now for the sake of everyone in chat. Um, but I eat ranch with pizza a lot, and I love it. I love, I love ranch with pizza. If you haven't tried it, it's great. All right. Harvard. Oh, wait, before we start. Since I'm, a, since I'm a Twitch streamer now, I tweeted about this in like a caffeine-fueled rant one night about how this is the best soft drink ever. And I still stand by it. The strawberries and cream Dr. Pepper. If you don't like it, you're wrong. Anyway, I'm having a great time. Found a new horror series I love. Got my strawberry Dr. Pepper, my stuffed crust. Life, life's good, man. I did pray. That's what I, did someone else, did I pray? I did pray, mom, me ma. We ain't, <laughs> we ain't said grace yet. Thank you. The harvester is a large, bulbous mass with a large amount of tendrils spreading from the base. The bulb measures around three meters in height and two meters in diameter. The tendrils, on the other hand, can extend up to 150 meters in diameter oh. horizontally. Okay. The harvester is a specialized form of crawl that grows in a unique and deadly way. A harvester is created when a node that will grow into a harvester instead of separate. I like how this began with like, you know, the crawl actually very beneficial to our society can be used in a lot of senses and most of its inhabitants are, you know, they're good for the environment. And now it's devolved into, yeah, so that there's these things called mimics. They'll run you down and eat you. Don't try to run. You can't. Uh, and also, the crawl has a deadly growth. So, like, all pretenses have just been lost. Breeding continues to grow. Eventually, it will grow tendrils of its own. It uses the energy provided by its mother branch and expands its reach further. Its tendrils hidden just below the surface of the ground. The harvester is equipped with two types of specialized tendrils. The first type is bulky and flat. They lie the closest to the surface. Mm. These branches are lined on each length of the tendril with spines, extending in the shape of a bear trap. That reminds me of uh, the monster from The Mist. I don't know if you've all seen The Mist, but if you have seen The Mist, this is one of the, this reminds me of the, the monster that attacks that kid in the garage. Each side of the branch, those particular spines have a vein that feed into them that pump two types of venom. On one side, the spines can inject a neurotoxin, which will attack the nervous system of whomever it is injected into, causing sudden paralysis. <clears throat> the other side can inject an anticoagulant, which when injected, prevents blood cells from clotting. Mm. Oh, Whenever no. a large animal moves across the area armed with these tendrils, the branches will clamp onto the animal and thrash violently. Once the prey has been injected with both venoms, the tendrils will rest and the prey will immediately collapse. The animal will be unable to move due to the paralysis, oh, and the boy. wounds caused by the thrashing spines will not stop bleeding. All the prey can do is lie patiently, until succumbing to blood loss. Once the prey has bled out, the second type of tendrils come in. They lie below the spine equipped once. These branches are thin, but very sturdy. They share similar anatomy to the small branches of the crawl, equipped with organelle that absorbs nutrients. These tendrils sense the blood, and move their way to the surface and begin to absorb the vital fluid. Once the blood has been consumed, the tendrils will wrap around the body and begin to shuffle downwards. This movement loosens the soil and slowly pull the body underground. Oh. Oh. Once secure, the tendrils will continue to feed until there is nothing but scraps. The nourishment absorbed by the tendrils. Ima imagine you you get like a vine that causes you to start bleeding and you can't move, like it said, like a bear trap. And then you go limp and the ground just starts shifting beneath you. So you get buried alive while you're paralyzed. Oh, oh, it's so good. Oh, that bangs, that bangs hard. All right. 
tendrils will be sucked back into the main bulb of the harvester. This bulb houses all the vital organs and the venom glands that pump into the spines. The nutrients are then converted are into usable energy. Pictures, I love it. The remains underground decompose, providing a rich soil, causing very prominent plant growth, which then attracts more animals. A strange behavior Lovely. the harvester displays as its choice of diet. The spines will only activate on larger animals, allowing smaller ones to pass by unaffected. The spines will also not activate on some species of bird. There are a couple theories as to why this happens. One, it could be that attacking smaller animals would cost too much energy for what they get in return, making it not worth the time. Another, could be that smaller animals may attract larger animals or predators, allowing a safe place where prey may thrive, and lure more predators. It truly is astonishing. That's a word for it. Although it is a spectacular creature, it is also very dangerous. The harvester is decently rare, only populating sparse areas in the northern hemisphere and woodland forests. Yeah, just places where people are number If you are stunned by a harvester, there will be no way of helping you, being that there is no cure, and fatality is 100% positive. <laughs> oh, oh, we got another pick. Cure, and fatality is 100% positive. Glitch, glitch, glitch. Family attacked by harvester while hawking. While hawking. Authorities refuse to handle. Yeah, authorities refuse to handle the harvester. Yeah. Yeah. The, while he's presenting it as just like, oh, it'll kill deer and fox. Not mentioning that this thing will just mutilate anyone. The best thing you can do is avoid encountering a harvester in the first place. If you are hiking. Take note of any warnings or signs saying that there are harvesters around. If you also notice an abundance of lush, ground-dwelling plants in a forested area, and there are no signs of wildlife, this is suspicious and you should leave the area, staying close <laughs> to the base of large trees or... I'm in the woods all the time. That is going to embed itself in my brain. If you see a large, suspicious patch of greenery and no wildlife, leave. Man, that's great! Oh, I love that stuff. Rocks. If you find yourself in the middle of a harvester ground, do not <clears throat> panic. Sudden movements may activate the tendrils and will inject you. Although a harvester is rather forgiving, do not risk any skittish movements. Remain calm. If you have any objects with considerable rather heft, forgiving. like coats, backpacks, or full water bottles, gently take that object and lightly toss it towards the bulb and away from your escape route. This will activate the spines on where the object lands, distracting the bulb for a moment. You will then slowly begin to do wide shuffles away from the bulb. If possible, throw another object when you are certain you are a fair enough distance away, just to be safe. Continue until you are complete. Kayla ain't gonna watch this stream, cause you know, she, she like works full time and she does adult stuff or whatever. She's not going to watch the stream, so I'm going to say right here, 100%, I would throw her. <laughs> just just right at that bulb. Yeah, I'm, I'm backing out. I have you guys to come entertain, so really, it's not my fault. Uh, but since she won't see this, I can say I'm throwing her at the bulb. <laughs> I'm throwing her to the harvester. What? 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 What's she going to do? See it? Witness this? No. Of course not. I can say whatever I want. Yeah, she's, she's going... Right, that her her doctoral her degree and all of it just going right at that bulb right into it she gonna do stop me she's already being eaten by the harvester uh oh too many neurotoxins silly idiot <laughs> what's that you're uh you have paralysis dummy completely sure you are out of harm's way you may come out unscathed <laughs> but don't be too obnoxious or you will be a harvester's next meal Throw what? Throw Next wife, up wife good. The host. Wife gone. <laughs> We're great. The host Wait, the info. what? Next the up host? Hits. The host. Alright. What? What are y'all yelling about? I didn't say anything. I said I'd throw my wife at, at a harvester plant. Who cares? Anyway. Lore. That's what you all want. Lore. 
Oh. Okay. I don't know that first word. The something. During a time of hardship lived the island critters. The critters were struggling in hard something. There was barely any food to go around, I guess. They would go out and gather whatever they blah, blah, blah. Okay, so at this island where he's sleeping, there's these critters, as they're called, that go out to gather food. Gotcha. The host of influence. All right. Before we get to the host, once again, we go to here. And we read. The harvester is a large, bulbous mass with a large amount of... Now that looks pretty... Yeah, same thing. Okay. The host of influence, more commonly referred to as the host, has its name derived from a host who invites guests to an event. Not to be confused with a host, a harbor of parasites or disease. The host is a semi-humanoid looking organism. It has the structure of a head, torso, and arms. Other than this, it shares no other characteristics. The lower half of the host is comprised of a mass of fibrous tissue and tendrils that burrow into the ground to hold the host in place. Instead of skin, the host is covered in muscular tissue fibers, tendons, and veins. In some parts of the body are covered in a meaty plate, used to cover any large exposed areas, I don't like but allowing movement. I love drawings like that where the it's just head vague is a enough surface where the face should be not sure. attached to a crooked neck which houses a slit in the front used for feeding. On the host's back is a mound of pores. Protruding from these pores are a hollow, hair-like structures extending outwards. These hairs are barrels that release spores produced within host's body by being fired into the air. These spores are hazardous, so keep clear of them at all costs. Luckily, oh, um, what was that? Uh -uh. They're hazardous. They're not good so by me. I know how to skip them. Costs. This is a picture of the spore, I'm guessing. Uh, oh, the spore and then people trying to get into windows. That's great. Awesome. Awesome. Luckily, the host is rare, only found in North America. Obtaining info about the host is a very risky and daunting task. This is because of their rarity and of how dangerous it is to be up close to one. The sores released by a host is very dangerous when inhaled. A host will release a cloud of spores into the air, which will be picked up by wind and carried great distances. If an organism inhales the spores, the particles will find their way into the organism's brain and infect them. An infected organism will show no symptoms of infection right away. But a couple hours after infection, the infected organism's behavior and thought process will change. The first symptoms that appear are restlessness, sluggish movement, what numbness of joints. Okay, 2642. Where did it say the mimic came from? Mimic is a bipedal creature with uncanny similarities to humanoid anatomy. They greatly resemble humans without skin, with added exaggerated features. These features include extended finger length, longer limbs, bulging, empty eyes, and their most prominent feature, a wide, teeth-filled smile. Although it resembles a happy face, this is due to coincidence, and is only how their facial structure some canine human flesh. It doesn't say, okay. Huh. Just a thought about what happens to these people. I don't know, it could be off, but we'll see. Restlessness, sluggish movement, numbness of joints, and lack of coordination. Then more serious symptoms appear over time. These include dizziness, migraines, impaired speech, and trembles. If you or someone you know show these symptoms, contact poison control or emergency services. After a total of six to seven hours after infection, the organism will cease all activities they were previously doing and begin to walk. The direction the infected will walk is towards the host whose I'll spores be have been inhaled by the infected individual. <laughs> if the infected makes cool, their I way like to the, the host, intercut with an they will kneel thinking. down in front of it 
expose their vital organs, and the host will promptly gut and remove those organs. <laughs> The host will consume them and discard the leftover scraps. However, if an infected organism doesn't reach the host within a 36 hour span or is treated for their infection, the effects will wear off and return back to normal. If the host is unable to. So if you can just keep them away from it for a day and a half, they're clean. Cool. I, I have a thought. When, when we get to the end of the series, if I haven't mentioned it, remind me, say, what was that thought you had about the whole series? I'll mention it at the end, but I'll save it for now. Find prey or doesn't like its current location, it will unroot itself and move to a new location. Their scarce numbers and the hazard of being around one makes getting info about the host very daunting. All you need to currently know is that the host is extremely dangerous and should be avoided at all costs. The host Next, is terrifying. The monoliths. The monolisk? Okay. Alright, so where's our where's our tail? Okay, that's what I thought. So the critters find the boys sleeping, right? Although one day the critters found the cave while searching for food. They found the prince in trance in his healing sleep. The critters were so I guess awe. In awe, the, oh, the critters were so awestruck and enchanted by the prince's magic. Interesting. I love it. It's so good. Okay, once again, we clear the original. The host of influence, more commonly referred to as the host, has its name derived Look, from... Look, everyone who goes right here, they're pausing it too. They want to see it too. It's not just me. Okay. The monolith is a very yeah. new creature. Only showing up in June of 1972 in the area of. Where is that? That was Canada. I saw that right here. What is that? Is that like the Maple Maple Leaf Moose Town? Is that Maple Leaf Moose Town, Canada? Is that its name? That's right. Correct. Ohio. You're right. It showed up in Ohio, Canada. Yep. Average day there are only life. seven monoliths, all of them located in a circular position, one and a half kilometers in diameter. This ring of monoliths surround. Oh, someone. Someone said their ears hurt. Someone said their ears hurt. Well, what? This ring of what monoliths hurt your ears? surround. That. Of monoliths surround. Is that what hurts your ears? Is this the noun that hurts? The monoliths surround. After all the mocking I received. After all the pain, after the all of the clips I'm going to see on Twitter for the next year of me of crying, surround. this hurts your ears. That's what I thought. The monolith is a titanic sized being measuring roughly 120 meters in height. <laughs> Whoa. Each monolith has two No. Oh, this is cool. When he said big, I thought like 20 feet tall. I didn't know this was like a, an eldritch god. Oh, oh, this series. Oh, it has, it has individual monsters as things that like that make people want to worship it. It has these. It's so Lovecraftian. Oh, put it into my blood. Oh, this is so good. Okay. Legs that are firmly embedded underground. The legs connect to a torso. Look at that! The creature itself is made of hundreds of thousands of meaty strands, tightly woven together to form the structure. These strands end at the neck, fusing into a solid mass of hardened flesh in the shape of an upside-down triangle, with a hole in its center. On each side of the monolith where arms would be, there are dozens of long, rope-like appendages. <laughs> they reach just barely to the... So, someone said... Subjects of Ymir, hear my words, which is an attack on Titan reference that won't mean anything to anyone else. But that was funny. Thank you. Round. At the <laughs> creature's feet, the strands go deep into the earth and extend horizontally a decent distance away. What the monoliths do is simply oh. stand and do nothing. That's so cool. The only activity documented that the monoliths have done was in... <laughs> ...during this period. They were I won't repeat those anymore, but I won't skip them either. ...were extremely aggressive. 
when the group of <laughs> were making their way to the city, uh, yes. the monolith that they had passed as roared a deep bellow and the swung its appendages at the team, completely wiping them out. When military vehicles were dispatched, once they got close enough to top the monolith, it roared another call, this time releasing an EMP blast, completely knocking the vehicles out in the vicinity. Okay. I'm ignoring the fact for now that it made an EMP. But I know, like, these photographs by are the artist who made the art, which is really cool for him crediting them that way in the series. I think it's very neat. But Spite of Artemis is one of the hardest names I've ever heard. Uh, and dang, it's not on Twitter by the looks of it. Hmm. Oh, well, anyway, that, that name goes hard. Just, just throw that Infinity. out there. Finally, long-distance rockets were fired and struck the creature. Oh man, the government was like, man, kill those things. <laughs> Yo. Although damaged. It regenerated oh, at great I speed saw, and resumed that. its stance on I saw that. You scale. come back here. Although... You come back here. What was that? Can't hide from me. I know how to click through frames now. You all thought I made analog horror videos before. You ain't seen nothing yet. I know how frames work. I can click. There it is. Wait, was that all it was? It was Although just damaged. Although damaged, I guess so. it yeah, regenerated at great speed and resumed its stance unscathed. Eventually, the area has been fenced off and is now restricted to all. I don't appreciate Ever your since, time. I hear that the monoliths stand silently. Now only a grand spectacle of awe and mystery, only adding more questions to these meat beings. And finally, the last creature on this list is... The sun? Dope! Okay, hold on. I love how they keep going up in scale too, too. This is so cool. Okay, I could probably pick any one of these, but there was a flash of something else before. Wait, I... What? No. What, what was that? Oh, the Earth! Why would I go forward? Is it trying to pull up? Is that Arabic? Uh... Stop it. The Earth is the other thing. I broke my computer. It's getting scared that I know how to do this now. Is there a better one? One that's less glitchy. All right. Why are they okay? They said amongst themselves, talking about the boy who's asleep. Who is that creature? Why are they here? Are they dangerous? A thought was brought up. What if he, something, could use his magic to help them? What if this creature could use its magic to help them? It pray. It may grow food or heal sickness. They continue to urge about the prince. They continue to argue about the prince. And his magic something end. The magis the majority of the creatures agreed that the prince has was dangerous and should not be meddled with. Okay, so these things are looking for food, they come to him. And they say that the prince uh, is dangerous and shouldn't be meddled with. Someone said I missed a page. I don't think I did. Uh, because unless there's another... Oh, that's in the beginning of the next one. Yeah. Uh, uh, unless it happens right here. Uh, yeah, that's the next video. Not yet. Yeah, I don't think I, I, don't think I missed a page. Because it says that... Get to that one, yeah. And the one before was the one about them finding him in a cave. 
right. Oh, wait, no, I went too far. Oops. If it keeps trying to load, I'm just going to have to say, trust me, bro. Okay, wh whatever. It's there. I, I swear I didn't miss it, right? Yeah, I didn't miss it. Uh, okay, so once again, the monoliths are cool. They're made out of strands. We're going to look here. Oh, there was more at the end of this one. Wait. The monoliths. Is this a lot more? That the monoliths have done was in. <laughs> I didn't mean to do team. that, but. You're welcome. Were yeah, we saw Although this. Damaged, it regenerated at great speed and resumed. Wait, hold on. Where did this one end off at? Although damaged, it regenerated at great speed and resumed its stance unscathed. Eventually, the area has Maybe been not. fenced off Maybe and I'm is crazy. now restricted to all. Ever since, the monoliths stand silently, now only a grand spectacle of awe and mystery, only adding more questions to these meat beings. And finally, the last creature on this list is... Okay, yeah, so there's a little bit extra here. ...more questions to these meat beings. And finally, the last creature on this list is marvelous and majestic world that exists today. It's as extraordinary to have such strange and mysterious beings appear all around us. Thank you for joining us on this journey of exploration and discovery of the lives of these living meat creatures. I see. Okay. So that was the end, right? It was proposed as the end because it gives us that and right before because it did it on this one too right before it's like in our final yeah, creature is it cuts of off and goes back to only the adding more questions so that's to these the end beings. of the series quote unquote finally, but then he the added an extra is. part to the end of this whole video singularity is the warp component of our and majestic world that, that was exists the singularity today. Document. It's as extraordinary Again. to have such strange and, and mysterious then it beings gives appear us the all around us. Outro. Cool, cool. Thank you for okay. joining us on this journey so, of exploration all right. and so that was like, of the lives of these looks like that was creatures. season one, right? Um, and then there's a whole season two, it looks like. So we have to watch it, clearly, right? Like, am I crazy? This is too good not to. <laughs> this is what... This is one of the most excited I've been about analog horror in a while. Yeah. Yeah. The trimming pet video. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're that that's that's coming up. Dope. This is this is great. I love I love this guy. This is fantastic. Not a season two, more of side videos. Okay, well, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, yeah, all right, we're all in for it. Let's keep rolling then. Uh, cook at home kitchen. This could be the... Cooking with crawl. <laughs> this is, these are great. I love this guy.
ads auto generated will just greatest discovery of the age. Baby. I'll let this feeling end. Have any information of the whereabouts of we make be making a dish that has recently gained a fair amount of popularity. Today's dish will be a cheesy called penne. To start off, these will be the Not really am a twi Twitch streamer. I'm eating food while we're watching the cooking show. Penne pasta. Roughly three cups worth of fresh crawl. Try to get a variety of sizes when you buy yours. <laughs> or when you harvest them yourself. That's, this is funny, I like it. One cup of cheese. Half a cup of green onion. One teaspoon of salt. Two tablespoons of Cajun spice. Two tablespoons of parsley. One tablespoon of dill. One tablespoon of garlic. A pinch of way too much dill and parsley i cook um if you put that much you're gonna kill any any meat flavor you throw in there no nope, way too much pepper and finally the most crucial ingredient new dryer company's newly released flavor enhancer to bring out the richness of flavors within each and every meal first get a medium sized pot and Go look at the wanted sign again. When? At the beginning of this one? Did I miss a wanted sign? Where's a wanted sign? I'm not moving forward until someone explains themselves. Okay. The beginning. Okay. I was too distracted with my this love could of the be series. The greatest discovery of the age. Baby. I'll let this feeling end. Have any information? Oh. I, uh, my head empty self, so freaked out by this series, just wanted to eat his pizza and not think about lore. And you all dragged me back into it. Okay. What about the CSI? The CSIS? Okay. Vincent Barrer, date of birth, 1968, Canmore, Alberta, height, eyes, Canadian. Do you have any information? Interesting. I wonder where this will come into play. We'll find out. The lore. Lore. That's what this channel is built on. Lore. Be making a dish that has recently Real life gained lore. a fair amount of popularity. And also whatever Today's this is. dish will be okay, hold on. a cheesy cold. For one, I like how they show the finished product picture uh, and none of it's cooked. <laughs> this is just raw noodles and cheese. Okay. Go back to here. To bring out the richness of flavors within each and every meal. I don't have trauma. I have lore. First. Get a medium-sized pot and fill half of it with water. Let her cook. I feel like don't eat the roots. Unless it hurts it, then sure. But I feel like eating crawls a bad idea. Salt, which is used to help the pot come to a boil faster and help flavor the pasta. Then, set aside to boil. Way more salt than that. You want that water like ocean water whenever you boil pasta. Makes it taste so much better. Grab your crawl and a sharp knife. Begin to cut the meat into a rough mince. These practical effects are great, man. What a great job. Yeah, you're right. Maybe mimics are made from eating this stuff. That'd explain it, idiots. Yeah, go harvest some crawl and do a cooking stream. Great idea. Okay, not quite. I was exaggerating a bit. Not quite crawl ocean water, but you make the, the outside, water salty. But the interior has a surprising sturdiness. I 
I can smell that. It's terrible. Then, gather the meat and set aside. Mince the green onion into rough segments. Take this mince and set aside as well. Next, so nasty grab looking. your skillet. Why does she look like a prisoner? Some oil. <laughs> I'm a slave to the crawl. <laughs> Take your minced crawl and spread it evenly across the skillet. <laughs> Ew. Stir occasionally until crisp and brown. It just looks like rotten meat. As your water reaches a boil, add your penne and stir occasionally. I'll be more talkative when I finish this. This is my last bite. Last piece. Cook until soft. And to be fair, this is the standard Twitch level. At this time, your crawl will be brown and crisp. I'm going above and beyond real, uh, even acknowledging you all who are going to make fun of me for the multiple mistakes I've made in this stream so far. Mix well. I'm so glad we turned off Urban Spook. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a nice survive. This is just relaxing. Eating my pizza, hanging out with the dudes. This is such a better vibe. Lay your cooked bunny evenly into your dish. Then add the crawl topping. I am not, look, someone said don't hurt Irvin Spook's feelings like talking about how you're chill right now. For one, this is five minutes of cooking. He understands this isn't supposed to be like cart racing adrenaline. And two, after that like 20 minute span of time from the knocking to the jump scare with the prop effect, I could say whatever I want about it. I could say that I hate the series as much as I want and it would still be outdone by my now on camera recorded reaction. So... I'm going to chill and relax because he's already beat me. There's nothing I can do about it. Sprinkle a generous amount of cheese along the still warm crawl for it to melt. At this Go back point, 10 seconds. The still this is a cooking stream. This is a cooking channel now, bro. We don't, we don't hyper analyze. We don't look at lore. We just vibe. Sprinkle we a generous amount of cheese along the still warm crawl for it to melt. What did I miss? At this point, finish preparing the dish. Go back further. Evenly into your dish. Is this far enough for you, you animals? Oh, he's wearing a, a respirator. That's nice. Then add the crawl topping. All right, so maybe it was something. Maybe it was something to look at. Whatever. I'm finishing my pizza. Leave me alone. A generous amount of cheese along the still warm crawl for it to melt. At this point, finish preparing the dish with your flavor enhancer, but allow your dish to cool. You're right. Yeah, the music. I saw someone comment that Celsius, the music kicks up really hard whenever the enhancer is mentioned. The government or some agency now, is allying themselves with this thing because of the presentation we saw, and now like the enhancer and stuff. Something fishy is going on. Said. Who 
are they? And I can't read that. It's that circle again. I bet that circle that we saw the picture of, I thought it was just a circle, is the singularity. But I don't know if it's maybe it's totally just over. Oh, oh, more, more fairy tales. There we go. Oh, let me, let me drink. Although, the other critters ignored the rest of their fellow kind. Instead, they secretly visited the slumbering visitor. They snuck what little food they had and carefully fed it to the prince, greatly hastening their recovery. Interesting. Okay. Something about the this ally ship that the prince makes with the creatures leads to Vetus Carnus. It has to. Many people get pets for companionship. Okay, before we get into guide to owning a pet trimming, I hate having grease on my hands. I'm done eating, so I'm going to wash my hand. I'll be right back. Okay, so now pizza time is over. It is lore time once again. So I'm back. I'm ready to be serious. They form bonds and grow relationships with these animals, even to up. the point of them being considered a part of the family. Most people get dogs or cats, but maybe you want something more interesting. Then you may want to get yourself a trimming. These lumps of meat my man he is building the monsters in the story where has this guy been oh i need to i need to i need to look at him i need to perceive him i have i've been missing out i see i've been missing out i love practical effects because no matter how unrealistic they look they are there they are real the story conforms around them and that look oh i'm so excited okay have grown a reputation to be a loving companion. It does look like the Daisy Brown video, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Or the early ones. Although please. most people may not know the proper way <laughs> to care for them. Aww. Today, we will be showing you how you can well, care for your pet cute. trimming. He looks so Taking sad. Taking care of a trimming is fairly easy, Aww. but this is no reason to slack off. I would. They are know. living things and do require I want a raccoon so bad. I would absolutely want one of these. The first thing to keep in mind when keeping a trimming is the temperature of your home. While trimmings are resilient to both high and low conditions, you want to keep your base temperature near room temp, maybe slightly cooler. That being said, trimmings prefer warmer areas to nest. A simple setup you may use is a box with some blankets on the inside. Make sure there Give is enough for your trimming to cover yeah, itself. Maybe. And now you have a comfy bed for your buddy. No. No. Next, <laughs> you so want cute. to give your trimming the best this diet so possible. Fella. Trimmings are not picky eaters and will eat anything you give them. To keep your trimming healthy, is that egg and strong, shows? a diet of dry cat or dog food that is high in protein, provided two <laughs> times a day, so is best. Look at it. As a treat. You may give your trimming any scraps of your food. Things like apple cores, banana peels, or eggshells are a perfect snack. A Did she say to banana? Is trimmings are nocturnal and make plenty of noise. What am I looking at? Of noise. What am I looking at? 
I, ch I can't change my brightness, I don't think. What is that? There's like a... Looks like a rock. To prevent you from having sleepless louder. nights, try to give your trimmings first meal in the late morning or afternoon. This helps them be active during these times instead. This is just what's like living with my dog. Another thing to Ollie, consider if you want a pet trimming is where they will be night. living. Your home should have enough space he for doesn't your love trimming to, scream. to roam he likes around, to crawl on your face as well as access to the outdoors, like a backyard. If not, be sure to take your trimmings on regular walks. This gives your trimming the exercise <laughs> they need, as well as allowing them to meet other trimmings. Aww. Trimmings are a Yogi social Bino. creature and need to interact with others of their kind, like how they, they do baby. in the wild. <laughs> it does baby. It's so cute. When it comes to entertainment, trimmings are not the most active and aren't the best at fetch or tug of war. This is my dog. This but here are other dog. ways to keep your trimming entertained. Some toys that trimmings like are little items they can push, around, pull, or carry. Trimmings also enjoy things that you enjoy as well like watching the television or listening to the radio they love seeing and listening to all the funny things coming from the devices don't like that part after a long day your trimming might be dirty and need a wash to clean them start your bath with a gentle warm water mixed with a bit I, of I understand that the point it's getting across is that like yeah the trimming itself isn't dangerous like it's not going to do anything but it's still connected to this hive mind or this great this greater body of the vetus carnis and it's dangerous in that regard and or body wash gently scrub the trimming's feet armpits belly and neck fold remember to be careful around their face and avoid getting soap in their eyes nose and mouth gently pat dry with a towel when done now your buddy is all clean and lastly as said before trimmings are social creatures so be sure to give them plenty of affection mm -hmm. they the love baby. receiving pats scratches and pets they also love to sit with you and cuddle. Since they communicate with each other in the wild, it is best to replicate this behavior with them as well. Simply talking to them is plenty enough. You can talk about your day, if anything interesting happened at work, if you are working on any new recipes, or talk about the weather. Trimmings are very good listeners and love to be involved. I, 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 I might be reading a little too much into it, which is what I'm good at. Uh, but the way it explained it where it's like, they love talking to you. Talk about anything. Talk about work or the weather or what's going on. It feels a little bit like perhaps, yeah, surveillance, spies. It feels like while they may not be able to hurt you, they listen to the radio communications. And we saw that thing, we saw that newspaper clipping of the crawl overtaking a radio tower so maybe these things act as listening posts like the vetus carnis is smart it has to be to some degree to do some of the actions they do they're not just dumb animals so perhaps the the trimmings are like listener listening devices effectively and that's why they want you to talk to them interesting he's still baby but interesting with all of these in mind you are now well equipped to have a trimming become a part of the family. Do things right, and you will have a companion for a long while. Lore! Lore! Where were you? Lore! <laughs> One day, the prince awoke suddenly. Thank <laughs> thanks to the critter's assistance, the healing process had finished very quickly. The 
friends had fully recovered and was now fully awake and aware of their surroundings. Surprised by the sudden awakening, the critters ducked and hid from the prince's sight. So eventually, wears off, prince wakes up. Got it. Cool, on to the next one. Let's keep rolling, let's keep rolling. Yeah, so I imagine each one of these are going to be about things from the main one. So we had a crawl video, we had a pet trimming, vi we had a trimming video. Now we get Meat Snake and then the Mimic. I'm not looking forward to that one. Uh, and then we talk about this species anomalies report is going to be about the Harvester, if I had to guess. Flavor Enhancer, if I'm right then, will come from the... Flavor, let me remember. Flavor Enhancer will come from the host. Um, the documents will come from the monolith. And message will come from the singularity, if I had to guess. Let me... Are there still no captions? No. Right. Normally they hide stuff in their captions. The only reason I ask... pointed out that there's that warning in the year at the of 1945 which further implies that they don't want people watching these tapes and again i think that the government or at least whoever's making these tapes is in on it or a part of beta carnis with the war finally ended the cleanup process had started during Ooh, routine sweep about of the that massive one. train tunnel the cleanup crew made a grotesque discovery found completely filling oh. the tunnel was a meaty wall and in the mm -hmm. center of the mass was an opening with several skulls surrounding it. Closer inspection of the blockage revealed that the mass was actually an extremely engorged meat snake. Its impeccable size had blocked off the entirety of the tunnel's path. There was many strange things with this creature. First was the coloration. Oh, A typical so cool. meat snake's color is bright reds and light browns. Oh. This particular meat snake was a very deep maroon. Another strange thing about it was its behavior. This creature barely moved. Meat snakes are normally sluggish and encumbersome, but the specimen discovered seemed to lack even basic motor functions. Its behavior was that of a plant's. Stationary, with only minor movements within. One would assume it was dead. The reason the meat snake may act this way may be because it was completely lodged in place and minimized movements to conserve energy. But how would it have gotten this deep into the tunnel in the first place? And by the looks of weathering, it had been in there for quite some time. So how did it get so large? The answer was discovered by a different cleaning crew who found the other end of the tunnel. They followed it until it met with the other end of the meat snake. Alongside it was a huge pile of car- <laughs> This meat snake's well, skin on, also- the Met with the other end of the meat snake. Alongside it was a huge, huge pile of- So corpses of all kinds of stuff. Yeah, because they eat everything. Human, animal, otherwise. And then disregard the few pieces they can't keep, right? The few bones like skulls and whatnot that they can't take into their form. Uh, so yeah, it, it had consumed so many dead things down there in that tunnel. Incredible creature design, by the way. A snake made out of flesh that uses skulls for teeth. Beautiful. Of <laughs> this meat snake's skin also displayed great amounts of resilience. It took several days of cutting to even obtain a sample. Here, you can see the clear difference between this meat snake specimen versus a normal meat snake's membrane. Testing on the sample showed that it had great immunity to damage. It tolerated extreme freezing temperatures, extreme heat temperatures, and even high doses of radiation. It is a wonder how such durability can occur in an organic creature. Another strange phenomenon is the smell off the skin. Normally, it would have a sour smell of rotting flesh. 
but the specimen displayed a rather pleasant smell, like that of cooking scrambled eggs. Ew. Meat snake was later Ew, discovered like to be that. mixing by unknown surfaces. How the meat snake was later discovered to be mixing by unknown surfaces. Meat snake was later in smell, like that of cooking scrambled eggs. Meat snake was later discovered to be mixing by unknown surfaces. How the meat snake grew in size was discovered to be. How the meat snake grew in size was discovered to be. Interesting. There's some conspiracy about how it got there, how it got as big as it did. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. It's so good. Maybe someone in government, the person it showed blurred out. Size was discovered to be. Maybe they were feeding it something. Maybe they were killing people to feed it, perhaps. Who knows? Maybe that's what the cold activity was, right? Because we know that there's cold activity around it, whatever it was. All right, let's get to the story. There it was. Boom. One of the critters built up the courage to meet the now awake stranger. They crawled to the prince's side and extended their hand in friendship. The prince reached back, and together they had formed the bond that they formed the bond that will change their fate. So it might have been when they touched. Something happened when they touched. Interesting. This is so cool. <laughs> Top comment. Imagine trying to explain to your boss how you lost a 40 meter long snake. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, that's so good. All right, next one. These are great. I love it. I'm on the war path. What? Uh, no, hold on, wait. Yeah, I don't care if it contains self-harm topics. Give me the video, YouTube. I'm an adult. YouTube. Thank you, my word. It's like an act of Congress to watch something that, oh, are you sure? Have you ever, do you know what dying is yet? This may be too controversial for you, but don't worry. We already took all his money. So we <laughs> dodged a bullet on that one. I swear. This website, okay. Now. can't tell I'm a little bitter <laughs> at their system. The one that periodically decides that I don't deserve, that I worked for. Free. As of the time the of this video's release, we have been facing a concerning increase of missing persons and fatalities on a global scale. The reason for this is because we are under attack. We have discovered that there has been a significant growth of mimic populations, Guys, which is threatening. The, the 30 second clip from the last one is going to bother me for the next few weeks, okay? This is a 30 minute video, a 20 minute video. Help. <laughs> Public safety. National leaders have released this instructional oh recording to teach you on how to defend yourself. Here is what you need to know about the threat. Mimics are humanoid, intelligent predators that are highly adaptive and feed solely on human prey. Mimics gain information on people by watching their daily lives and pick to hunt people when they are most vulnerable. The most common times a mimic will attack is when you are asleep, that walking alone, or in a cornered position. Mimics are cautious and calculative creatures, taking precautions to ensure a successful hunt. They utilize various tactics to capture a person by surprise. 
One of the more well-known tactics is hiding itself no, inside of furniture no, don't, to don't, blend into its no, environment. Don't tell me it's in the closet. Common it's objects that mimics can hide inside are sofas. <laughs> Yo. Yo. <laughs> Bro. Dude, imagine you lay down in bed and you look at the mattress and <laughs> I don't like it. Oh boy, okay. New fear unlocked. I didn't know I was afraid of that, but I am. Recliners, wardrobes, ottomans, and other places a mimic can comfortably wait. Mimics are able to contort their body in ways that allow them to fit inside smaller places. They also use it to expand their body, making themselves appear larger for intimidation. Another method mimics use to blend in is their ability to put on and wear clothing. Mimics put on layers of shirts, pants, and jackets to hide their bright red skin and blend into densely populated areas. In very rare cases, mimics can develop and grow to look very similar to human beings. Pairing Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so they... They'll wear clothing to follow you around in public, like at night on a street or whatever, right? But they can also make their face look like it? Is that what he's saying? In this with clothing, it can be very hard to tell the difference between a mimic and a person right away. If you are unsure if a person is a mimic, look out for key features that may reveal their true form. <laughs> look for <laughs> abnormal <laughs> facial features, like large, bulbous yeah, eyes, I, I flat noses, that. wide mouths in an uncanny smile, and clammy skin. Also pay attention to other exposed body parts like hands. Mimic people will have long fingers with no fingernails. If you are unable to see their face or hands, watch their walking pattern. Mimic's legs are long and hunched. Their walking will be unusual and irregular. Here is what you do if you are met with a mimic. Cry. If it stands before you, do not panic. Cry. Stand your ground and try to appear larger. Yeah, okay. like it's a Wave bird. your hands and make plenty of noise. Maintain eye contact. A mimic will hesitate to attack a potential threat. If you are armed with a weapon, aim for the head or legs. We're getting confused These are the best noise. areas to hit to immobilize the threat. Fight back and don't let it get a hold on you. If you find a mimic that hasn't discovered you yet, stay out of sight. Call the authorities and alert them of your location. Stay where you are to avoid startling the mimic. If the mimic gives chase, run. Try to get somewhere out of sight and hide. Do not leave the area. Officials will need to locate you to help. Stay low and stay quiet. With the information you have learned, use it well. And stay safe. I don't know if I'd call this proper info. Maybe, maybe it's like shoot him or whatever, run. This might be, I don't trust the first guy. Oh, okay. Wait, observe footage for Christopher Janus, yeah. 1983. Observe footage for confidential information completed. Discard and destroy all copies of this tape, okay? Are we about to see another attack? Because that's great. I'm happy we get to see that. I think those are her shoes. I think I remember those shoes in my moment of trauma. Okay, let's okay, get this out of the way. All of you who are in the comments like, oh, it's right behind you. It's under your couch. Look, I don't know if you know this, but I have the stream pulled up right here. I can see myself. Whenever you're like, look behind you, I could just glance there and I could see what's behind me. Okay. So look, if you're going to, you want to play these games, you're going to have to get more creative. Okay. Okay.
I'll go back to the ear ringing noise. The bleep, the redacted, I will play that on loop again. Uh, okay. Hello. I thought you only had 30 minutes of tape on that. I know, but I just gotta see how it works. Like, yeah, well, I never got to use one of these. Night. <laughs> it's too bad. You were the only person who could film with me, so you're gonna have to put up with it. Fine. Yeah. Just screw you. Every time I look Screw over him. trying to see if people are saying, like, he's behind you, he's going to kill you. Oh, like, you yeah, think just because I don't know how frames work. There we go. And I don't know, there's oh. a pause button, and I don't get the videos can play knocking <laughs> noises. You just think, I'm not going to know how stream, you know, reflections work. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Got I can't be dumb at now. everything. I have to pick my battles. Oh, look at that over there. You can't see anything unless I, like, point directly over there. There's gonna be something in the flashlight. Like, nope, can't see nothing. Are you sure? We you, you know, you know, it's funny though. Uh, when I, yeah, yeah, I, I hear you all. Oh yeah, it's fine. You just go get your hunky bubba. What he's doing right now, where he's with his girlfriend, and he's like, "Man, it sure is dark. This is a pretty high power flashlight. Let's shine in the dark. Yep, still can't see nothing. Pretty dark out. This is literally how I am all the time." <laughs> like, whenever I was walking around, Kayla's like, hey, actually, you know that tree? You know that tree? He's like this and it does this. Kayla says dating me is like microdosing Wikipedia. Like, I just, I never stop talking about random unrelated topics. Um, so, yeah. We should be out this late. Fine. I'll cook you stuff when we get home. Don't worry. I'm hungry. Too bad. Someone said I smell like egg. That's harsh. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> Wait. Ah, shit. Right, but still turns off and on randomly for some reason. Like, it's the best thing I could get my hands on, though. Turning on and off, but it's the only yeah, thing that they would give me. Yeah, going to throw at the harvester. Keep that it in mind. It works, though. I just gotta watch. This is gnarly. It's not my fault this guy lives in a fucking dump. We're almost there. We just gotta get through the woods. Hey, babe. Uh, short, shortcut yeah, through the woods. Just gotta get through the woods. Hopefully I show up on camera. Be fine. Uh, hopefully there are lights out there. Like, people still live there, right? Oh, Can't be that bad. Pretty dark to me. But, it was just one guy. I I don't know why. Like, why would they get rid of everything? Dogs barking are never a good sign. No. I'm reading chat to make me feel better. The sky looks nice. I really don't want to deal with these guys. They can't capture it. Barely capture the ground in front of me. So, what are we doing out here exactly? Well, supposedly they found some guy. Like, it was like. It was like a grody scene. Like it was disgusting. Like they, like they had to get rid of the trailer he was in, and then, like they didn't let anyone nearby, and it was like this big conspiracy. So you know, I'm filming that. Hopefully, I get a good mark for it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just about mimics, not the harvester. You know where we're going? Yeah, we're almost there. We're on the road. We're right next to it. This is also like, with Kayla. It's literally up I'm there. fine. I know where okay. roads. I know where roads work. Come on. You walk on them and then you get somewhere. Yet. That's how every road that's ever been made works. Okay, there's that's no road already. that doesn't go somewhere. Yeah. If you walk on the so road, hungry. you'll be somewhere, right? And we want to get somewhere, so just let me drive. Okay, almost there. It'll be, it'll, it'll be like five minutes. Five minutes, okay? Fine, fine. We're on the road. This is shortly before I throw her to the harvest. We're almost there. We just got past the tree line and make the way to the trailer park. Then we can go home, okay? Okay. I don't want to be out here either. It's weird. Dead like, ends end in cul-de-sacs, Ray. See, you're right a circle, here. and then you're going somewhere. Uh, you go kind ahead. Of simple I ass. Can't see a thing. Dead roads lead to themselves, and all roads lead somewhere. So there you go. Uh, just up here. There should be a path. Right there. Yeah, right here. See, I found the path. We're all good. That's a good one. Harvester? I barely even know her. I'm gonna remember that. I'm gonna steal that joke for the video, thanks. Appreciate it. I think I've made that exact joke regarding the tractor. Someone's like, yeah, I bought a new harvester. And I went, harvester? I hardly know her. Classic. Now this reminds me of home. Walking through the woods. <laughs> Very dark at night. Night vision's so cool. No, she's still alive. Everyone thought she was dead. She's right there. This way. I think this way. Yo, look at this. I didn't see this on my way over here last time. It's cool. Like, we, we could get a shot of this in, like, atmosphere, you know? It, it just looks like tetanus to me. This uh, is, oh my word. I mean, I keep making jokes about this sounding like me and Kayla, but the yeah, number of times I've seen an abandoned cool. vehicle on the road instead of hey, something cool. along the lines of, well. that would be good for atmosphere. <laughs> he just like me, for real. I, I do I do want to say though that like I'm so into it I'm forgetting that this is like a YouTube series I'm just watching this like it's a story that's unraveling this is so cool taking a taking like an analog horror that's about this company and then mixing in like old fantasy lore and then these elements of like there's a conspiracy going on and then to have like physical monsters like actual practical effects and then to do whole segments like this in as part of a police investigation and this is the found footage incredible like i said i'm in love boys we're on the flat part now yeah we're close the trailer should be right up ahead
I think the reason they're still alive is because the conversation they had coming in is that a guy had to have his trailer moved because there was uh, they said he was this is where mauled, everyone was that he was like There's just no one here now, torn to pieces Not a single building and they think inside. an animal did it so now they're going over like they said they were do, they were repoing something from the property or something like that um, there's no one here. So the only reason they haven't Train. been killed yet is because they're going to where it happened. Once when they get there, it'll go down. This is the spot. Right here. Yeah. This thing. Okay. So you you take the camera and the light. Uh, point at me, but don't point at my eyes, please. Like a bark bag. This is me making my in person YouTube videos. Guys, you wanna talk about fear? You want you wanna know what fear was? I don't even, I think back to the fact I did it and I'm like, what was I on to do that? When I went to, uh, the brushy, uh, which one was, it? uh, the, uh, Brown Mountain Lights, when I went to, uh, Wiseman's View by myself at two in the morning, not a single soul up there and just started walking through the woods. But you want to talk about like noises getting freaked out and I, I just had the camera with me. I was insane. I don't know what's wrong with me. Hold on. I think he's literally making a YouTube video. <laughs> I want everyone to keep in mind, YouTube decided, just to keep in mind, YouTube decided that this video didn't deserve money, deserved to get blacklisted in the algorithm, and wasn't suitable for audiences and shouldn't be promoted because of this sentence. That's it. That, that got him blacklisted, the whole video. So, yep. And, and you're right. I, I said he's making a YouTube video. I know it wasn't literally a YouTube video. Uh, I, this is that was a joke. He's making like he was trying to make some investigative journalism about a murder that took place that the police said was a suicide. Uh oh, I said the word. Looks like this whole four hour stream doesn't get money now. If I wanted it to, thanks YouTube. What a wonderful site you have. Really glad that you're supporting new creators to come onto your platform and make content for all ages and definitely not fostering a, a site that is completely user-friendly and only for adolescents and children because you don't feel the need to nourish any other age groups or demographics because they don't make as much money, allegedly. So anyway, he's going here to... Um, make an in the field video why? about, come out about this supposed here. suicide. So that's why I uh, and he's he's better get murdered <laughs> by a by a mimic. And that's it for now. 
You said grizzly way too much. What? You said grizzly way too much. Too much? Yeah. Okay, should I retry? Uh, sure. Okay. It paused. That one turned out alright, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, why is it rolling? Did you catch that? Oh, 30 minutes to film and yet you screwed up. I needed someone to film. It's very quiet for me, but can you guys hear it okay? Okay. I think I just have my headphones down because I'm afraid of screaming again. Yeah, because like, back there was the perfect time for a serial killer to just jump out and grab us, you know? Cut it out! Yeah, Scary there. enough as is. Kayla once said she was talking to me about like the way I am when it's just the two of us and I have a talk. And she was like, do you know how, like, a little kid will run up to you and be like, hi, want to see how loud I can jump? Want to see how high I can jump? Want to see how much I can yell? And, like, they'll do that stuff. And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, you do that, but with, like, obscure knowledge. Chris? 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 Where are you? Now Chris got mimicked Chris! hard. Come on! This isn't funny! Chris! I just want to go home, come on! Fine, I guess I'm going home without you. I'm cold, tired, and hungry. You want to stay out here? Yeah, I see y'all joking too about the want to see how loud I can jump thing. My friend's kid, he's four, or he was maybe three at the time. We were at his house, and my friend's like, he looks at him and he goes, Hey, just, you know, company's over. Be be respectful, okay? Don't don't make a huge fuss or whatever. And as soon as he got done saying that, the kid ran up to me and said, "Want to see how loud I can jump?" And as he jumped, he stomped the ground. So it was it was just the loudest noise ever. It was a kid jumping but also like kicking the floor as he landed. And his dad was like, "No, stop." <laughs> So yeah, there was a literal want to see how loud I can jump. And play games you can. No, Chris is in heaven, man. It's over. Chris is gone. <laughs> Chris, Chris is on the glory on the glory train by now. In the swings by and by. See if this was Kayla, right? If Kayla disappeared, if I was like Kayla and she didn't answer the first time, I would just be singing spirituals. Welcome back to the house. Oh brother, let's go down. Let's go down. Come on down. As Kayla's screaming behind me. Down in the river to pray. <laughs> I went down in the river to pray. <laughs> Studying about that good old way. <laughs> like she's gone. <laughs> Chris? What are you doing? Because this isn't funny. Oh! Yo! 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 Oh, no! Absolutely not, my word. This is she gone, they're all gone. Oh man. There he is. Yep, that's him. That's the man. It's our boy back again.
They're all super dead. Give me the lore. Okay, there it was. There we go. All right, here we go. <laughs> My ears. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Uh, the critters led the prince out of the cave up to the top of the hill. The prince had laid buried under and... the pr Yeah, the prince had laid buried... Oh, the top of the hill the prince had laid buried under and showed them the forest. This is our home, full of wonder and beauty, although the forest struggles to provide for us all, for all us critters. We are facing disaster. Can you help us? Interesting. All right, perfect. So we are now on to the next. No, not the, oh yeah, I forgot. I had to go watch this by itself because it had self form. All right, species anomaly report. So this one's gonna be about the harvester, if I'm right. Thing I'm gonna feed Taylor to. What's the starting phase? Is for everyone's like, oh, you don't know, like this one, sarcastically. I trust y'all. Those kids look kind of strange. I remember there was that news report of the entire family being killed by one. Or it said family attacked, but I assume they were killed. Maple Leaf Bacon Town is really having a hard time. Maple Leaf Moose Town, that's it, yeah. Them kids are about to get eight. <laughs> this is full of art. He done got Canada. got it and liquefied it underground oh. <laughs> oh man you remember how i said like with uh, urban spooks like you have to earn doing brutal stuff like that this is what i mean by earn it like it fits the story it gives the brutality of the world and it's not gratuitous but it's it is creepy it sure is creepy
Canada has fallen. I guess this is them seeing him. The skeleton. Oh no, the mom got it too. Okay. Probably trying to save him, man. To get paralyzed and then pulled underground where you're liquefied? Huh. I love it. So good. All right, more lore. That that was probably that one was probably my favorite in the new series so far. Out of uh, out of like the uh, the bonus ones that are out of the mainline descriptions, that one was probably my favorite. That that was effective, like the implication of them being liquefied. Oh, give me a better one. Give me a better region than that. Oh, okay. Well, I can't read any of that. Can I make the? I don't think I can make the quality, but yeah, it's a 1080. Uh, man, I can't read any of that. Something. Him, the figures, brilliance, the power he heal their home. So it looks like the boy used his magic to, if I had to guess, to create something that would be food for them, right? And I'm guessing this might get a lot more. Oh, someone said, remember how it said it uses smaller animals to lure bigger animals? Using the son to lure the mother? <laughs> oh, brutal. Um, so, man, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Uh, so I think maybe the kid used his powers to create whatever the singularity is, and that's what started everything, if I had to guess. All right, now stop touching my... Yeah. Perfect. So the two left should be about the monolith and the uh, the flavor and answer must come from the monolith and the singularity. Flavor. The most crucial component to enjoying a good meal. The way food tastes Fine. is what makes eating so my pleasurable. Audio because I see you all. But what if you could savor every little detail you could possibly want? Is that better? Is that better for you people? That is why we at Nutrient have made it so that Cowards. you may enjoy every single there. bite you take. Hope you're happy. With our product, the Flavor Enhancer, you can extract every last morsel of taste from your plate. With overwhelming demand for this essential product, even since our start earlier this year, we have delivered what you wanted. Now introducing the Flavor Enhancer Deluxe. Now packaged in a larger size and modified recipe, there is now even more savory goodness to go around. Since our debut in mid-1990, the Flavor Enhancer has shown to be a major hit, with our product flying off the shelves. The Flavor Enhancer Deluxe will allow us to satisfy your growing, tasting needs. Now allowing you to add even more enhancer to your dinner, making your food even better to enjoy. Delicious. The Flavor Enhancer Deluxe, available on shelves now. New Trier Co. Experience True Savor. Is the pyramid the thing on the monolith's head? These larger serving sizes make dining even more pleasant. Now allowing more generous oh, amounts oh, of enhancer Oh, 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 you're right, you're right. It wouldn't be... Flavor... Y'all are right. This wouldn't be the monolith yet. It would be the host. I skipped one. You're right. Enhancer Deluxe. Now available in stores near you. New Trier Co. Experience truth. Save. your taste buds pop with the new deluxe size. Make tasting even more awesome. More awesome. 
Swell your kids with this essential part of every meal. New Triarch. Flavor Enhancer Deluxe. Required for all meals, no matter how small it seems, just a little more. It is crucial to everyday eating. It's got to be the spores, right? This is how shit ever tastes on my drops. Interesting. So that leans into a few things. For one, it leans into my theory that. Yeah, it leans into my theory that the government or some agencies or what have you are working with the Vita Carnis in some regard, or they want them to succeed at least. Or they're possessed by them, however that works. Uh, and they're creating this thing, probably based off the spores, to put it in people's diet. And that is fascinating. Maybe, you know that thing that said, uh, if they don't get back to the host in 36 hours, they're fine. Don't worry about it. What if they're not fine? What if they go on to be like people who serve it through media and through commercials and stuff like that? That would be interesting. Uh, also, there we go. This is much better quality. The prince gas. Oh, so whatever happened in the last one, he has a flag now that has the triangle on it. It's the logo of the prince whenever he did this. The prince gathered what he could and then set sail onward. Once the prince returns home, they will come back to the island and return to the critters. He left them with this singularity. And then set out on this mission. Is the prince humanity or are the critters humanity? Because whichever one is, I think the other one's the Vita Carnis. It's something out of this world. Something supernatural, right? Hmm. Yeah, we've... No, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So Flavor Enhancer was the spores. I forgot one. Uncovered Messages... Uncovered documents is going to be the uh, the the guy the monolith. Experience true savior, yeah. <laughs> Files confiscated or not released to the public. facing char ah, stop it it's facing charges after numerous reports of sickness after conception of the product the flavor enhancer only statements made from the company so far are dismissing any issues and that their product is safe to consume of course they are Oh, it, this is the guy. Okay, so there is an order forming around the Vita Carnis, like a religion, the cult practices almost. And this high-ranking officer has the pin for this. Is the same one who found the. Uh, he's the one who discovered the meat snake missing, right? Or maybe he got it out of there, right? Because he was part of this religion. We see world leaders also a part of that religion, and these are ants. That if, oh, I see what they're doing. Okay, cordyceps, the, the parasite we all know about because of The Last of Us, the, the fung, not the parasite, the fungus that gets into your head, was, gets into the heads of ants, makes them crawl to a branch where they lock onto the branch and then they die and the, the fungus grows from them. They're a, they're a living uh, garden bed for the cordyceps, right? So it's comparing humans 
eating the spore of the host and then serving it as ants who are infected with cordyceps. Interesting. Interesting. Private Organization of Containment and Research Consult Association Society, or CARCAS. Oh, carcass. Oh, that's cool. The abbreviation spells out carcass, a dead thing for the people who serve the dead flesh. How cool. Oh, that's dope. It's called carcass, the name of the group. I'm, oh, that's so dope. Has been, has experienced backlash from government agencies about operation about cooperation and violation of newly introduced policies. Cool. So the the pin, the group who sticks with the orange pin and serves these things is called Carcass. That's so cool. That's dope. Okay. They're having fight. I don't know if that was NATO. It may have said national something. Oh, hello, Aiden. Hi. No, you can't eat the meat snake. Stop that. I raised you better. Okay, so that was the end of that one. Hold up, did I miss? Was there not lore? Did, I, did it go by me and I didn't see it? What? There was no... Where's my lore? Where's my little... Where's my trinket? Where's my little... Little clip? My little Dark Age clip? Unlisted? Where? There's no more book pages. <laughs> I mean, uh, it makes sense because the book pages ended with the kid, the prince showed the critters magic and then he had to go. But when he goes, he carries the flag and says he will come back one day. So somehow that is a starting point that leads into our narrative now. So it makes sense, I guess. I just liked him because I know how to use, I know how to jump around on the timeline now. So I feel smart. Okay, this is going to be our last one. Message. The last one wasn't really about the monolith, so maybe this one's about the monolith. And Singularity was kind of a bonus one, so if it has the monolith here, that'd be the complete package, technically. In the distant horizon, the Look group who's of right. monoliths stand vacant. Although closed off to outsiders, their stands can be observed well outside the perimeter. Their head's an upside down triangle, by the way. It is known to have hundreds of thousands of fibers that weave themselves deep underground, all connected in a grand mycelial network. You might be confused as to why you received this package. This was left to you because we share a common goal. I'm aware that you study the carcass and research their properties. I'm also aware that you have received backlog in doing so. Thank you. 
All the videos we've watched. Interesting. My hands are clear as a Astonishing sight to behold. Dope. Dope. That's so cool. The series goes so hard. Huh. Well, I'm definitely going to have to make a video on it. <laughs> it's too cool not to. Uh, there's too many interesting pieces, and it's such a fascinating series. I love it. This is cool. This has been really cool. I dig it. Yeah, it's probably a missing... Actually, the missing page kind of reminds me of... No, that's a complete page for it. I thought maybe the page was ripped out, but it's not. That went hard. That was dope. Yeah, that was awesome. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I'm a fan. <laughs> that was a good series. I like it a lot. Um, I want to watch more of it. I'm fully invested. Uh, I like it much better than Urban Spook, as stated. And yeah, it was a good time. And the the boy with the boy in the camera is good too. Uh, so yeah, that went hard. Um, I think I'll go ahead and call it there. We've been going for four, over four hours now, uh, so I think that's a good place to leave it off at. This is definitely gonna have to get a video at some point. No promises as to when, but eventually it definitely deserves it. Uh, but I had a great time streaming. Thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate it. Um, it means a lot. People keep telling me to look up Portrait of God. If it's short, if it's short. I do have hu normal human tasks I have to get to today, but... Okay. Seven and a half minutes is fine. We'll end with this. We'll end with a seven and a half minute one. Okay. Sure. Fair enough. All right. Portrait of God. Here we go. To, to wind it off. Interesting. That's from, uh, if I remember right, that's whenever God is giving them instructions on how to build the temple in the wilderness. If I remember right, I could be wrong, but it's an order to Aaron. So that is God talking, I'm pretty sure. What does God look like? I'm going to show you a painting, or rather, a photograph of a painting. Just take a moment and stare at it. What do you see? If the answer is nothing, if it just looks black to you, don't worry, that's what I see too. But that's not what everyone sees. The painting I've chosen for this project is titled Portrait of God. While most viewers see nothing. Some insist they see a person in the darkness, one that they can describe and draw out with consistent details. It's a man, or close to a man. Wrinkled, skinny. Really skinny. He looks skinny. He's smiling. He's grinning. 
smiled down at us. Almost looks like the corners of his mouth got smudged. Well, he's wearing a mask. It's, it's too wide for his eyes. He's looking down with wild eyes are big. They're big. They've got this glint in them. Speckle of light in them. Honestly, it's unsettling. Of course it's frightening. That kind of power should be. I don't like looking at it. I don't like it. It's beautiful. Maybe it's just a trick of the light. Maybe they're seeing something they want to see. But how are their descriptions so consistent? Interesting. Maybe they really are having a religious experience. And why does God appear to them and not us? What? Oh the okay, there's some there's someone behind her, it looks like. What was that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't <laughs> uh, also Aiden texted me and said my Twitch chat's telling you to turn it off. What what did I get myself into? Someone talked to me into this. <laughs> What does God look like? I'm going to show you a painting, or rather, a photograph of a painting. Just take a moment and stare at it. What do you see? Seeking signs from God and find the devil. Idiot. good I like the shots, very, very good shooting.
Superb. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, I love that ending. That was just what her mind experienced staring into the black canvas. Like she said, we all want to see God, but why doesn't he reveal himself to us? Like, what does that mean? And then like her personal her personal moment of horror and realization and like she'd been staring at it for hours bleeding holding the cross oh that was good that was good stuff i like that that was great it was all in her head oh man very nice and yeah i see that face back there i see you yep yep yeah i see you all right okay thank you <laughs> hold on we're if i if i get started down a rabbit hole i'm not gonna stop we, we need to call it there. Like I said, I yeah. Oh, this guy's got a whole channel. All right, well. You win. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, this guy this guy is probably worth checking out. We may, we may do a stream watching some of his stuff because that was pretty good. Uh, but for now, uh, I believe that should do it. We had some good ones today. We had, we had three bangers and one that I'm like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was good stuff. That was good stuff. I enjoyed it. Uh, and hopefully you all enjoyed it too. So that was the stream for today. Again, these are completely impromptu. And I'll probably do more impromptu ones in the future whenever I feel like it. But above all else, I just want to say thank you all for watching. Uh, I appreciate it. Like I said, I hadn't caught up on Analog Core in a while. And I wanted to and figured might as well with you guys. So we'll do it again soon. But for now, that should do it. So I just want to say thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.